I want to continue to come to you and talk to you about the one true God, a spirit named Jesus. God is not a man, though he comes fashioned in the likeness of the Son of Man, that he should light neither the Son of Man that he should repent. God is a spirit named Jesus. The man, Jesus, who's made of a woman, made in law, made to be sin, who died, only mortals can die, was buried. And God, a spirit named Jesus, quickened that mortal body, as it says in Romans 8, 11, raised that mortal body that could die from the dead the third day. The man, Jesus, is not God. That's just the man, Jesus, right? That's the man, Jesus, right? God comes fashioned as a man. The scriptures say that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. That God is called the father of spirits. That God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Neither is God worshiped with men's hands. So God comes fashioned as a man. You can't believe these Trinitarians because they try to make God man. God is not a man. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. So understand there's a difference between God coming fashioned as a man and God being a man. So all throughout so-called time, God comes into this world, which is temporal, right? Things which are seen are temporal. Guys, things which are seen are temporal. Second Corinthians 418, things which are not seen are eternal. God, who's the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, talking about Jesus, 1 Timothy 1, 16 through 1, 17, who is the only potentate who only hath immortality, hence he cannot die, Dwelling in a light which no man can approach, which no man has seen, past tense, nor can see. Talking about Jesus, right? Has seen, nor can see. God is a spirit named Jesus who comes fashioned in the likeness of sinful flesh. And the reason why you're not supposed to have any images, any graven images of male or female, is because God is not a man. Neither that he should lie, neither the son of man should repent. But he can come fashioned in the likeness of anyone who believes the gospel and has their mortal body quickened by God, just as God quickened the mortal body of the man, Jesus, who died for the sins of the whole world. And God raised the third day. God is the one who says, if you believe the gospel, understanding that the legal sin debt was paid by the blood of the man, Jesus Christ, that that legal sin debt, which was paid, tells you that, look, the requirement under the law would be blood without remission of blood. There's no forgiveness of sin. So the legal sin that has been paid for every single man, right? We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all what? Dead. He died for who? Sinners. So the man Jesus died for sinners. Everyone, all sinners, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Okay. That settles that. There's no stupid Calvinist argument, argument that needs to take place, right? We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. He didn't die for all? Okay, then all weren't dead. I don't understand why people are having these long debates. We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. You don't believe he died for all? Okay, then all weren't dead. <laughs> okay, that, that argument's done. Seriously, like, why are they having long debates? We thus judge that if one died for all, Christ died for sinners, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Do you understand how silly these arguments and debates are? Right. Okay. So we under, we've established that Jesus, the man, died for everyone. God, who's a spirit named Jesus, same name, but God is a spirit, not a man. God, who's a spirit named Jesus, says that you must believe on him for everlasting life. It is God, a spirit, who raised the mortal body of the man, Jesus, from the dead. God is saying, you believe the promise and he will give you the free gift, not of works that any man should boast of eternal life because you're believing God. You're not believing man. So these Trinitarians, you got to watch them because they're going to tell you that God is a man. They're going to say he's the so-called God man. And all they're doing is they're trying to racialize God. And then they're painting three white men. You know it. And you don't see the Trinitarians are not going around saying all those images in Europe painted all over the world are blasphemy. You don't hear them saying anything about that. They're not raging. Only only time they have a rage and they're going to go into something is when they try to when the so-called black, so-called Hebrew Israelites come. That's when they got something to say. That's when they're upset. That's when they got to come all mosey up to y'all nice and try to convince you of the error of your ways. But not when they, they paint God as a white man. OK, with a, with a hinge of a little bit of a tan, you know, essentially. So don't let these guys fool you. That's why they try to move this little stupidity. Talking about some of the Middle East. Right. The Zionism is so dumb. Zionism is one of the Zionism is a heretical, lying, blaspheming, 
colonization scam, just like those fake three Abrahamic faiths that wear the same hat that claim that they're the people of God. The children of the flesh aren't the children of God. So these are people who say, I thank God I'm not like other men and try to use God to justify their murder. Right. That's what they're doing. And so God says our weapons are carnal. Right. So when he talks about the sword, he's talking about destroy man, woman and child. He's not talking about destroy them with a literal sword. He's talking about the sword, which is the word of God out of his mouth proceeds the sword. He's saying destroy the enemy, which is dead. That's why he's saying cry aloud and spare not. OK, I just want to establish this because many of you guys have this fake, this fake God. You have this war profiteering, three fake Abrahamic Trinity lies of the three fake Abrahamic faith God. That's who your Trinity is. It's the fake, the fake, fake Christianity with the Trinity, the fake Islam. And you got the fake Judaism. That's what those who say they're Jews or not. That's what that's what you have. You have the fake. You have children. Here, here's where they are. They're children of the flesh that somehow believe that they're somehow related to God. By what? How are you related by God? Each produces after his kind. God's not the dying kind. He's not the temporal kind. He's not the mortal kind. He's not the dying kind. He's not the tripping kind. He's not the kind, he's not the kind that falls on his way to the crucifixion. He's not the kind to let somebody mock him. God is not mocked, right? So these, you got to watch these Trinitarians. They're fake. And then when it says no man has seen God at any time, these Trinitarians can't explain it. They're like, well, OK, no man has seen the father. No one's seen the father. One problem. First Timothy 1, 16 through 1, 17 talks about Jesus. The king of kings, the Lord of lords. Right. Eternal, immortal, invisible, the only and th think about it. It says Jesus is let me let me show it to you guys. I got to show it to you. I'm sorry. I know we're I know we're going into it, but. I just want you see everybody. I keep seeing these people talking. You should debate. What's their debate? Is I'm declaring the truth. If you don't believe what I'm saying, then you're just saying you choose to believe what that person's saying versus what I'm saying. What no one's gonna make you. Here's what you gotta understand. No one's going to make you believe anything. You either you either if you want God to be a white man, then you made your idol. You made God a white man. Okay, the black Hebrew Israelites made their God a black man. Okay. Since you don't believe God can come fashioned in the likeness of anyone. I mean, just just so you know, the scriptures say for all of us who are saved, it is God that worketh in you to do and to will of his good pleasure. Now, if God worketh in me, I know it's not the works of my flesh. It says God whom I serve with my spirit. God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit. Later in the flesh can't please God, which is why it says I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. My mortal body has been quickened just as the mortal body of the man Jesus has been quickened, according to Romans 8, 11, right? KJV. You can see it. It's there for you to see. If you don't believe God is here, I'm just I'm just asking you a simple question. Ask your friend, Sam. Ask your friend Renee, ask your friend Greg Jackson, ask your friend Jason Jack, ask your friend Jack Smack. Ask all these Trinitarians how and who saved them, who saved them, who gave them the gift of eternal life. That's all you want to know. Say, did God give you eternal life or not? Because it says, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of faith. And it says from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. And it says the spirit is life because of righteousness. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. The spirit is life because of righteousness found in him. The him being God, Colossians three, having not my own righteousness. Then it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But it says you're in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. It's not talking about the flesh, because once you believe you pass from what the mortal to the what immortal. You're no longer of the temporal things which are seen or temporal, but of the what things which are not seen or eternal, eternal. That's why when you listen and you hear the gospel, it says in first Peter four, six, the gospels preached to those to them that are what dead. Well, who are the dead, Marcus? Well, you know, the body without the spirit is dead. What? The body without the spirit is dead. What are you talking about? I have a body. You don't have the spirit. You're in the what? See, there, here's the thing. You got to understand. There's a natural body. That's the body that the children of the flesh have. That's the same mortal body that was raised from the dead the third day by God, a spirit named Jesus. And there is a what? A spiritual body. Now, a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as you saw the man Jesus had. So when it says no man has seen God at any time and talks about Jesus being the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, and says he's the only wise God. And then you 
see where it says Jesus is the, the potentate who only hath immortality, the only potentate who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, which no man hath seen past this, nor can see. And then the Trinitarians say, well, you know what we have to do? Now we got to change the definition. You got Sam changing the definition of death. Okay, all right, he changed the definition of death for you. That's how he tried to get around it. He's like, well, well, what do you mean? What do you mean God can't die? Uh, it says he only hath immortality. You ask Sam what it says here, he only hath immortality. And it says in Romans 8, 11, that that body that was quick in the mortal body was a mortal body. And by the way, Sam, with all your logic, he ate dead fish. Where did the dead fish go? Remember, things which are seen are temporal. Got some fish? Hand me some fish. Give him some broiled fish. Uh, honeycomb? Got some honeycomb? Oh, I'm going to eat some honeycomb. I'm going to eat some dead fish. Well, well wow. Okay. I, I guess I didn't see. I guess I didn't see. I thought I'd seen a, a ghost. I guess I didn't. I guess you're, I guess you're, since you're eating dead fish, question, is dead fish eternal? Is dead fish immortal? See, you can try to sound intelligent as you want, but see, a dead fish there's no way in hell you're going to convince anyone who has who's thinking that a dead fish is eternal. And you can't convince anyone who's actually thinking that, wait a minute, God is eternal. There's no everybody understands God is eternal for the most part. Most of us understand that God's eternal. We understand that God has no beginning of days or in no end of life, that God is that God's the creator of all things. And he says, God says, God says. Second Corinthians 418, things which are seen are temporal, things which are not seen are eternal. It is talking about Jesus here in First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.16, who it says is the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. And then it says the only, only, only wise God is talking about Jesus, who's invisible. It's talking about Jesus. So if I go over here and I say, well, let me go to let me go to Deuteronomy 4, and I click on it. And I said, let me go because I see many people want to argue and they want to have you guys can have all your debates and you'll win debates and you'll get the praise of men. They say, oh, my goodness, that guy is so smart. You keep on doing your debates. You you guys debate away. You keep on debating away about foolish genealogy and say, well, wait a minute now. Uh, well, I think God got a chosen race. How do you think they're the chosen race? Well, because they got the same blood and the same flesh of Jesus. Fool, everybody has the same flesh and the same blood of Jesus. You can see that in Ephesians 5, 29 through 30. And you can see that through Acts 17, 26. All men that dwell upon the face of the earth have one blood. Everybody has the same flesh. They came from Adam and Eve. What are you talking about? So what, what the hell are you talking about? What, what you're saying makes no sense. So we go to Deuteronomy right here and it talks about people and it says, look, and they're going to make these graven images. Let me see where it's something about the graven images. just some some somewhere. It says, lest you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of male or female. So. When people start painting the Trinity and trying to say, see, people, they get upset at the so-called Hebrew Israelites, the so-called black ones. But then they're so quick to say that, well, we think that God's people are children of the flesh. This is essentially what they're saying, guys. They, you notice that the so-called Trinitarians, you're like, would you really, could you quote that God is, it says in the scriptures that Romans 9, 8, it says the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Could you please quote that? Could you quote where it says God is called the father of spirits? Could you quote that? Could you quote where it says in Acts 17 that God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands? Neither is he worshiped with men's hands. You got to ask these people. You just got you have to sit for a second. You have to steal yourself for a second. You have to just rest for a second and think to yourself. What do you mean God's not worshiped with men's hands? What do you mean God's not worshiped with men's hands? Let me understand this. God, sit for a second and think. Instead of running, saying, I want us to please debate, have a debate. Sit for a second and think. Search the scriptures. You be a Berean and you say, Wait a minute. You don't let somebody just redefine. Like I saw Sam uh, Shamhoon or whatever his name is. I saw this man redefine death. I saw him read. Well, what do you mean by death? Well, it's not that he went out of existence. So, guys, when some next time when somebody dies in your so-called family, because, you know, the children of the flesh, they all perish. 
they die. Right. Sometimes when someone dies in your, in your family, if they if they keep existing, what you do is you put them in a deep freeze. You, you do what, what is it? Cryogenics. You, you put them in a deep freeze. You say they exist. Therefore, they're not dead. They exist. Therefore, they're not dead. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sam. The body without the spirit is dead. And who's the gospel priest to the gospels priest to them that are what? Dead. Well, wait a minute. It says it's appointed man wants to die. Then the judgment. We thus judge that a one died for all. Then we're all what? Dead. So wait a minute. The people who are walking around, they're the they're the dead and the gospel's priest. So they've already died once. Right. So the gospel's priest to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in flesh, but live according to God in spirit. If they don't believe. Oh, that second death. Mm, not so good. Not so good. It's a pain. I mean, once to die, then the judgment, the gospel's preached to them that are dead, that they may be what? Judged. It's a point of man wants to die. Then the judgment, the gospel's preached that they may be what? Judged. People are condemned already for their unbelief. God had already concluded all men under un un unbelief that all may be saved by what? By grace through faith. So God is saying he'll have mercy. It's not that God's mercy is insufficient. It's not that his grace is insufficient. It's just that you got to you, you got to believe. You got to actually believe the gospel. You can't go and make God a white man and then be on the sneak and say, well, I'm not saying he's white, white. I, I know. I know. Historically, the people who invented race and the chosen race, which they've included in the by the way, guys. Chosen race is included in the so-called modern Bible versions. You can't sit there and listen to people tell you, well, we're not trying to be teach anything that's racist with the Trinity. But because if they didn't believe the lie, they would be the first ones to say there's no such thing as a racial Jew. But they're not saying that now, are they? They're not saying there's no such thing as a racial Jew. When it says a Jew's not one outwardly, needs that circumcision outward in the flesh. Right. But a Jew is one inwardly and circumcises that by the heart in the spirit and says, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice where? In Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a what kind of creature? New creature. Old things are passed away. Wait a minute. The gospel is preached to them that are dead that they may be judged according to men in the flesh. Old things. Behold, all things are become new, but live. I give unto them eternal life according to God in the what? God's called the father of what? Spirits last time a quickening spirit, each produce after its kind. That was born of flesh, flesh, that was born of spirit, spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hear the sound thereof, and canst not tell from whence it cometh or whether it goeth. So are all those who are born of the spirit. I can tell where the children of the flesh are going. They're going to go right to the grave. And by the way, the fact that it says no man has seen God at any time, and then it says there's only one wise God and his name is Jesus. And you know, it's not the flesh that died because Romans 8, 11 tells you that mortal body that was quickened, that was raised from the dead, that ate dead fish. That was a mortal body. And it also tells you that uh, he's the only potentate dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. That's past and present tense and future tense. And it's like saying to you here in first Timothy 1 16, talking about Jesus who comes fashioned in the likeness of the son of man. Cause you know, when Paul comes, it's like, Paul, are you in the flesh or in the spirit? Paul's like, I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But Paul, I can see your outward man. I can see a mortal body. I can see a body that's going to die. Paul Romans seven. Uh, if I do the things that I would not is no more. I to do it, but sin that dwelt in me that is in my flesh dwell no good thing. Paul, what did you say? Uh, it's no more. I that do it. What? I'm sorry. What did you say? It's no more. I that wait a minute, Paul. What did you say? Uh, if I do the things that I would not, it's no more. I that do it, but sin that dwelt in me that is in my flesh. Well, Paul, you're losing a personal pronoun. You're using a possessive pronoun, but you're saying it's you, but it's no more you. It's sin that dwelt in you. Then you clarify and say that in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. You said how to perform that which is good. I find not. You're not hypostatically unifying the flesh with the spirit and saying I'm serving God with my flesh. In fact, it says God is my witness whom I I serve with my spirit. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister those who shall be heirs of salvation? Salvations of the, I know them that say they're Jews or not. The salvations of the real Jews who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. God's called the father of spirits. So people are going to lie to you. Trinitarians are going to lie to you. They're going to lie to you constantly about things. They're going to re redefine words. They're going to say one thing one day. They're going to say something else tomorrow. But you got to understand God's the spirit. He's not worshiped with men's hands. He doesn't dwell in temples made with hands they in the flesh can't please god no man has seen god at any time you got to see it by faith so when it talks about you know blinded the mind because yes sam is correct and he's talking about this this knowledge because he says while you're in the flesh you have to see it by the foolishness of what they call preaching that's why it says if our gospel be hid it is hidden to those who are lost, whom the God of this world had blinded the mind of them that believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel which is the what 
which is the image of God, which is the image of God should shine unto them. Right. If our gospel be hid, it is hidden. This is the knowledge. This is in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, that God peradventure would give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. It's talking about Christ coming fashioned in the likeness. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me in the likeness of sinful flesh, but I'm not in the flesh. It's just that my mortal body, just as the mortal body of the man, Jesus has been quickened, raised from the dead. That's a dead body raised, but I'm not in the dead. I'm not in the flesh, but in the what spirit. This is what it's talking about. The last Adam, a quickening spirit. And he that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. And it's God that worketh in you to do and to will of his good pleasure. God whom I serve with my spirit, which is what? Joined into the Lord. This is why it says he that are born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin. This is why it said he that abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. This is why Jesus was saying to him, say, if you've known me, you've known my father. Also, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. What do you mean? If I've seen you, you've seen the father. Was he was speaking to him. If why am I speaking? Blessed art thy by <laughs> Simon by Jonah for flesh and blood had not revealed. What do you mean? Flesh and blood had not revealed. I'm speaking to you. Aren't you flesh and blood? Aren't you the way, the truth, the life? What do you mean? I'm speaking to you. I see you face to face. What do you mean? No man has seen his face. That is. What do you mean? Nobody can see his face. And live. What are you talking about? Well, who is this? Who is this Jesus? Because there are definitely people who saw the man, Jesus. There are definitely people who saw him face to face. I mean, I imagine when they smoke, when they when they spat on him, slapped him up. Right. When they slapped Jesus up, spat on Jesus, plucked his beard, put a crown of thorns on when they mocked him, when they were beating him upside the head, talking about some prophesy, prophesy, sending him back and forth. Right. When they were doing that, when he fell, I mean, I mean, what were they laughing? They didn't see where well, they were mocking him when he was a member. God is not mocked, but they definitely mocked the man, Jesus Christ. They were mocking the hell out of the man. Jesus. They were mocking him left and right, smacking him, prophesy, prophesy. Remember they was, remember they was doing all that. Do you remember they were doing all that? Yes, they were mocking him. They mocked, they mocked Jesus. He wasn't he whipped? Wasn't he whipped? Wasn't he beaten? Wasn't he bruised? Wasn't he, wasn't he hung up on a cross? Wasn't he pierced? Right? Wouldn't they, didn't they, didn't the Roman spear? I mean, I, he must, the Roman, the Roman soldier must have seen Jesus when they pierced his side with a spear, with a Roman spear and out came water and blood. They must have seen that, right? They must have seen it. They they were looking, right? Didn't they look at his face? Remember when he bowed his head? Didn't then they look? Didn't they see his face? Oh, y'all, Lord Jesus. Guess what, y'all? Y'all heard about that? How they got what they call it? The 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 shroud of Turin. What do they call it? They got this thing, see, where they got this image and they say, you know, this was the this was the burial cloth. This was the cloud that this was the cloth that Jesus was buried in. And they said they looked at that and they said, oh, look at the features. The features look. It definitely don't look like the so-called black Hebrew Israelites features. That's what they would tell you. And these fools going to try to sit here and talk about some weed them. We're not teaching the Trinity for anything nefarious we're not teaching this is a this is a true doctrine the trinity the doctrine of the trinity is certainly this is what the, the doctrine of the trinity was invented guys you need to study you need to study your history you need to see you are for y'all who are of this world and in the world who love the world and the things in the world and, and fight for the world you know as opposed to what jesus said my kingdom is not of this world if my kingdom were of this world then would my servants fight right my servants would fight but then he said, love not the world, nor the things in the world of any man love the world. The love of the fathers not in him store not for yourself treasure on earth where these break in and mock to corrupt. Everything that was spoken, everything spoken, all of a sudden you don't want to you don't want to see it the way God sees it. The reason why is because, see, there's a fake three Abrahamic Trinitarian lying of fake Abrahamic faiths. These, this Trinity lie, this so-called Islam lie, this so-called Judaism lie, the three war profiteering whoremongers who do who war, war and war more. And all they do is claim, well, you know, we got to keep on fighting. We're having a godly war. How are you having a godly war? You know, are you destroying the enemy, which is death? No, you seem to just do what your father do. You just bring forth more death. Remember when Jesus told those who claim to be something or not, you're of your father, the devil and the works of your father, you would do. He's a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the what? But see, you don't understand, Marcus. Um, you don't speak the Hebrew. Uh, when he said they were of their father, the devil and the works of their father, they would do. He was a murderer from the beginning and, and abode not in the what? 
truth. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his what? Of his own? Was he, what language did they speak and what language did he speak? Did he tell them that in? You guys are so silly. You worship languages. Oh, wait, well, did he tell him in Hebrew or did he tell him in Greek? I guess when you, you know, I guess you can't lie if you speak the Greek. You can't lie if you speak the Hebrew. You got to be kidding me. Like the, 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 the deference. People are showing deference to, to children of the flesh. When it says, if any man have not the spirit, it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. That is he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. And when they pierced his side, the man, Jesus on the cross, when they pierced his side, the one who died for the sins of the whole world and paid the legal sin that was blood. When they pierced his side with that Roman spear, guess what came out? Out came water and what? Blood. That is he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. God comes fashioned in the likeness of the son of man, but God is not a man and he shall lie, neither the son of man and he shall repent. They pierced the side and out came water and blood. That is he that came by water and blood, not by water only, but by water and blood. But it is the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. If any man have not the spirit, he that believeth the son hath the witness in himself. What is the witness? This is the witness that he has given us. Even what? Eternal life. Right? This is the record. What's the record? What's the witness? What's the record? Receive ye the witness. Receive ye the spirit. God is my witness. Receive ye the spirit. Receive ye the receive ye the witness. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or the hearing of what? What's the record that he had given us? Even what? Eternal life. And this life is in his what? One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one what? Body. But who's the head? Who's the savior of the body? Well, that would be God. How many gods are there? There's one God. He's the head. The God, what? God, head, the savior of the what? Body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You all, you all been baptized by one spirit into one body. You're not in the flesh, but in the what? Spirit. If so, I will dwell in them. I will what? I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. They, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Know ye not that you're the temple of God. What kind of house is that temple? Well, let's see. You are lively stones built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual. What kind of sacrifices? Spiritual. Why spiritual? Because flesh and blood apparently cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. Oh, wait a minute. No man has seen God at any time. Oh, that's right. To the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Wait a minute. The appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only potentate who only hath the immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. Well, wait a minute. How's the rapture going to work if no man has seen nor can see? It says no man has seen nor can see. So now you have Sam Schumann or whatever his name is redefining. Well, when it says see, it's talking about not. It's just talking about like the knowledge. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. You, we're preaching. It's through preaching. You have to see it by faith because no man can see him. That's why it says, you know what? In First Timothy, I think it's 316. It says uh, without controversy. Great is the mystery of Godliness. Why is it a great mystery? Probably because God comes fashioned in the likeness of uh, the Son of Man. Why is it a great mystery? Why is it a great, without controversy? There's no, con this, without controversy, great is the mystery of Godliness. How is it, why, why would it be a mystery? You know, the same people talking about some, I don't, don't go, to, don't go tell them. They, these are the same people. I want you to, I want you to really think about this. The same people who for years and years and years and years, they've never spoken up against the lie of the idea of God having a chosen race. These fools have never spoken up. They're over there in the so-called, so-called Middle East, geographically redefined by the colonizers. They're over there in the so-called Middle East right now, murdering and killing and, and just fooling and tricking these people, lying to these people. These, these people are wrongly divided against themselves. You know how they need to classify themselves as, hey guys, let's stop casting stones at each other because we're just, I'm a sinner like you're a sinner. So why am I casting stones at you trying to kill you? No, but no, you know what's going on? One group has said, no, God's chosen us. We the chosen race. We the race above all races. We can't even, they got lost talking about some, I can't even marry you. What are you talking about, fool? You can marry, corruption can, can inherit corruption. 
You can sow into the flesh of them and of their flesh you will reap the same thing you are. Corruption, fool. You're corrupt. They're corrupt. Corruption can... All flesh had corrupted itself upon the earth. People just don't believe it. it. said, he that soweth into his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So you marry somebody, you're like, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Right, fool. You can sow into your wife, and what you're going to have is a, a corrupt child. That's why it says make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. Right? A corrupt tree cannot produce good fruit, neither can a good tree produce corrupt fruit. If you're born of God, born of the spirit, you're born of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Meaning that fruit doesn't wither and none can pluck it from his hand. Right? That's why he's the root and the offspring. Okay? That's why it says, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. We're not perishable fruit. So these guys, they don't believe in a spiritual body. That's why they're able to invent stupidity, things like the so-called chosen race. And all they're saying is, God is white like me. That's all they're saying. Don't let these fools fool you. Some of you guys are talking about something. You got to have a debate. You got to ask them. You got to ask them the question. I'm gonna, let's talk about the simple things. What does it mean by they that are in the flesh can't please God? Well, what that means is, um, let me let me talk to you. Let me let me holler at you for a second. No, it says they that are in the flesh can't please God. But then they're going to be stuck because they're going to be like, wait a minute. Jesus, Jesus, the man Jesus was, came, he came in the flesh. Who's an antichrist? But he denied that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh. Right. Present is come perfect present tense is come is come christ is come in the flesh guess what he, he's here jesus christ is here he is come it's christ in me the hope of glory is come present tense let me get the, from my computer dies this computer is on the, on, the, on the verge of dying. It's on the verge of, of, of dying. See? This, this, this computer is going to die. It's, it's temporal. This, this computer doesn't have eternal life. Isn't that something? <sighs> so, guys, you got to think about this stuff. You're going to have a lot of people going to tell you a lot of things. And you're going to be like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I keep hearing people say stuff about um, trying to redefine... Try to redefine who God is. The, the ultimate thing, all they're trying to do is they're trying to say, essentially, because if you said to these guys, God is a black man, all of a sudden they'd get cured. They'd get cured. Then they'd be, then they try to sound all super nice and liberal. <laughs> and the only reason why they're doing it is to keep their flesh. These are the same fools. The colonization scam has been going on. The, the Islam colonized people and had slave trade, right? Islam. And I'm not saying there aren't so-called, don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying there's no so-called black people who, who participated in it. Because again, he that committed sin is of the devil and all of sin. See, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta believe the basics. <laughs> you gotta believe the basics. He that committed sin is of the devil. All have sinned. So what does that tell you? Are you now going to say the children of God are the devil? He that committed sin is of the devil. You can't just say, well, you know, I don't like that now. My goodness, how have we got so many? You can't just change your mind on he that committed sin is of the devil when it conveniently suits you. He that committed sin is of the devil, all have sin. He that are born of God cannot sin. You see the difference? Each produces after his kind. And since God's not a sinner, He's saying that his children aren't sinners. That's what God is saying. He's saying since God says, well, those who are born of my incorruptible seed, they're not sinners. No. This is what God is saying. Hopefully this will work, guys. Hopefully this Unless this computer dies. If it dies, it dies. You know, the scriptures say today, if you hear his voice, it doesn't say today, if you hear their voices, it says today, if you hear his voice, not their voice, there's no plural plurality of voices. It's either you have the witness in you or you don't. But that's why it says out of his mouth proceeded the sword. There were no three swords. There's no, oh, out of his mouth proceeded three swords. No, no, this, it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. Talked about how you confer not with flesh and blood. Which when they pierced the side of Jesus, out came water and blood. Okay. So, um, again, I'm telling you this, guys, because 
it's important that you understand who God is. It's important that you understand who God is. People are going to keep lying to you constantly about who God is. They're, they're relying on this thing like, well, the name Jesus. Well, okay, well, yeah, they're the name Jesus. Many people come in the name of Jesus, but he says, if any man have not the spirit, but it says, if you have the spirit, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But then it says, Colossians three, your life is hidden God. And it says you have what? It says you put on Christ. I mean, look, 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 listen. I just want to understand this. For as many as, for as many as you, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. It says you put on Christ. It says you've been baptized by one spirit into one body. Then it's saying he's the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. Now it says to walk in the spirit. It says we walk even as, even as he. Let's see. Let's, let's make sure. I just want to make sure because see, people are going to treat you like you're an idiot. He that says he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. When it says ought, it's not saying, well, sometimes you're going to walk in darkness. And sometimes, because remember, he says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you got to, you guys, you have to reconcile this. He's not saying, well, you ought to. It's like saying, well, no. Well, if you have eternal life, you ought not die. I have eternal life. I ought not die. Just to give you an example. Look. Well, he's not willing that any should perish. <laughs> like, 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 let's think about this. Let's use it the way, look, look, the whosoever believed in him shouldn't, they should not perish, but eh, maybe, maybe they will, maybe they won't, you know, who knows? The word should, it should, you know, she should, they ought not, they ought not perish, they should not perish. No, 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 no. He's saying, he's not saying should like, no, he's saying if you have, if you believe, look, yeah, there's an if, if. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Did you believe? Oh, you believe on him to what? Everlasting life. That's what it says. He says, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. This is what he says. He says they, they cannot die. He says they cannot die. Neither can they die anymore. <laughs> what are you confused about? And see, you got to understand what I'm telling you is I'm saying that don't try to glory in your flesh. I'm saying not to try. See, think about it. No flesh will glory, right? This is why they don't like the fact when it says no man has seen God at any time. You notice this, this is why they're redefining it. So they're having their little, they're having a little Catholic so-called devil agents come in talking about some, well, you know, you got to believe the Trinity. You know, the Trinity is true. No, no, no. The Trinity is fake. The Trinity is phony, right? The Trinity is a lie. And so they, they, they want that trinity because they want to make that flesh made of a woman. They want to make that made of a woman flesh. They want to make that God. They're like, Holy Mary, Mother of God. You know, she gave birth to a person, right? She gave birth to a person, you know, one person, two natures, you know, the, the God man. That's what they're trying to tell you. That's what they're trying to say, right? But then it says God is not a man. And they're like, well, I don't really understand. They said no man has seen God at any time. But they say, I don't understand. But then it says, talking about Jesus, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. Then, Because they try to say, well, okay, of the three distinct persons, he's talking about Jesus. That's why when they draw the Trinity and they say, well, we okay, now we just got to draw three white men. Because they're like, well, it said no man, has seen, no man has seen God at any time. That's talking about the Father. And they said, okay, but Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And then they said, but, but Jesus is not the father. That's what they say. Well, Jesus ain't the father. So that's, that's what it means. But they try to explain it away. But then you got a problem because then you go in and you say, well, wait a minute. First Timothy says, Jesus is the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. And then it says the only wise God, according to the Trinity, that would be black. That would be Jesus it would be blasphemy. He's like, well, Jesus, what you doing? You denied the other two members of the Trinity. Jesus. What are you doing? You said you're the only. Right? The only. What do you mean you're the only wise God? Eternal, immortal, invisible. What do you mean you're the king of kings? Right? Does, what do you mean, Jesus, the only potentate who only hath immortality? What about the other two? 
only hath their mortality dwelling in the light, which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. What do you mean you're the only potentate? Don't you mean you're the co-potentate? Well, you see, it's uh, one God, but uh, three distinct persons. Uh, okay. Okay, let me just explain just just one just one question. Just gotta ask you one question now. Uh the, the man Jesus who died, is that God the one who they could see? You agree that man's men saw the man, you agree they saw who they killed, right? They, they saw who they murdered, right? They saw who they hung up on a tree, right? They saw who they spat upon, right? They saw whose beard they plucked, right? They they saw that. They saw when he stumbled, that people saw him stumble, right? They to help him up. They the guy said, Let me, oh, you stumble, let me help you, let me help you up. Got it, you gotta get to your destination here. You're going to remember, you're going to the crucifixion. Let, I gotta help you, right? And then, then the Romans, and then all the people who was mocking the man. I mean, God's not mocked, but it said all the people who was mocking him. So, uh, you saved others, save yourself. Why don't you hop on down? Remember, they was mocking. They was, they was just just having a good old time. They're like, look, this is a, it's like a it's, this is like a party. They said they was having a little picnic, wasn't they? When they having a picnic, you know, you know, what picnics, the histories of picnics. Oh, they was having a little picnic over there. They was like. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, they had Polaroid. They'd be taking pictures and all kinds of stuff, right? See, they was looking. It was a spectacle, right? It was a spectacle. They didn't remember the people who claimed to be his people said, don't, hey, Pilate, don't, don't put that sign up there. I'm talking about some he king of the Jews. What are you talking about? Don't put that sign. That's embarrassing. He, he about to die. We... We don't want to be like him. We don't want him to lord over us. We don't want no crown of thorns. We not thorns and thistles. Meant for the fire. Our work shouldn't be burned. What are you talking about? We Death doesn't lord over us. We don't worship idols. We not idolaters. We're not death worshipers. No, come on now. We going to these Look, you know what? <laughs> he says if he keeps going on like this, this is what these is what those fake, phony, false people, children of the devil, said. If he keeps speaking, if he keeps preaching, if he keeps telling the truth to people, they're gonna come away and they're gonna come take away our Rome, 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 the Trinity, the Rome, the Rome, Rome will come and take away both our what? They love the world and the things in this world. And Jesus says, if my kingdom were of this world, then were my servants fight that I might not be given over to the Jews. And then it says, I know them that say they're Jews or not. It said, thou art called a Jew and make thy boast in the law. He tells you neither they that are circumcised keep the law, but they want to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. The scriptures clearly tell you, I know them that say they're Jews or not, but are the synagogues of Satan. And it says, he that committed sin is of the devil. Why doesn't every so-called grace believer say to you, he that committed sin is of the devil? They don't want to say that. You notice that they hate the hot cold. Ooh, they hate the hot and cold. They hate the hot cold. That's why they bring you. They say lukewarm. I'll meet you in the middle. Hypostatic union. Well, just because we're born again doesn't mean we can't. It says he that born of God cannot sin. He that committed sin is of the devil. Well, just because and then they try to fool you because they say, well, in the scriptures, you see, they're calling them brother. And he's telling them about this. And they're admonishing. He's talking to them. He says, count them. not." Hey, listen, let me let me show you this one. They don't believe that no, no, no flesh should glory before him. Well, no flesh should. Right. Oh, OK. Wink, wink. Right. How would no flesh glory before him if he himself is flesh? Little contradiction, right? God coming fashion manifest in the flesh doesn't mean God's flesh. That's why it says manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, right? Seen of what? No man has seen him at any time. Jesus, whom no man has seen nor can see, right? Dwelling in the light which no man can approach, right? So that's why I was saying, well, how are you going to glory before him when you can't even approach him? You can't even approach, if you try to even approach him, you'd be burned. But people approach the man Jesus, Right? You can't even approach him. You can't even approach. You can't even approach God, a spirit name. You can't even approach him. That's why he comes fashioned as a man. 
Because you can't inherit his kingdom, fool. It's like he's like, corruption cannot inherit incorruption. And he tells everybody that you must be born again of incorruptible seed. And people are sitting here like, hmm, I'm one of the great debaters. You need to debate Sam. Uh, let me ask you guys something now. Everybody who's making these debates who claim that they're the people of God, how? You ask Sam, you ask Renee, if you're a child of God, is that based on flesh and blood or is that based on spirit or is that based on flesh, blood and spirit or any combination thereof? Are the children of the flesh the children of God? Are they born of flesh and blood? Are they born of the spirit? What are they born of? Are they born of the spirit of God? Are they, are they going to say, well, I'm born of the flesh and the blood of God. Is that what they're going to say? Is that what they're going to, what are they going to say? The wind bloweth where it listed, and I hear the sound thereof, and canst not tell from whence it cometh, or whither it goeth, so are all those who are born of the Spirit, born not of flesh, nor of blood, nor the will of man, but of what? But of God? Born not of flesh, nor of blood? It even tells you, it says, there's one kind of flesh of man, another of birds, another of fish, another of beast. One kind of flesh of men. And it says, all flesh is as grass, and the glory of man is the flower grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. No flesh will glory before him. No flesh. And then, just just to make just to just 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 to prove something. For all the people who are trying to play these little word games, they're relying on ignorance, and they're saying, "Oh, well, you know." Um, let's redefine death. Listen, for all of us who've been born again, we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit because we're in God who is a spirit named Jesus. We're not in the mortal body that can die. Romans 8, 11, which God, a spirit named Jesus raised, quickened, raised from the dead, right? That ain't dead fish is when we believe we're like, okay, once we believe we're no longer of this world. Once we believe we've been born of incorruptible, the incorruptible seed, the word of God that lived in the body forever. Once we believe we're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, we just had our mortal body quickened and God comes fashioned in the likeness of that, which is not us. Right. As Paul said, that's no, that's not me. That old man that does these sin, that sins, that's not me. He that are born of God cannot sin because his seed found in him, having not my own righteousness, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit is life because of righteousness remaineth in him. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he cannot sin because he's born of what? Born of God. So people can play games all they want. You guys can want to seek debate and be entertained all you want by the folly and the foolishness of these people. You just love the fact you say, I want to hire somebody who's skillful at twisting the word of God because I want to glory in the flesh. The question I have for you is if you knew that you were going to be executed, let's say you were a poor Palestinian and you were sitting there and somebody who thought they were part of the chosen race thought it was their duty to kill you because you're a beast. They say you're not you're not. They look down on you're looking down on you and they're saying you're a beast and you deserve death. And they're ready to. They say, you know what? I want you to die slow, beast. I'm not even going to take out my thing to shoot you. You're sitting there. You're trapped. You're cornered. You can't get out. And here they come in with their with their weapons of destruction. They say, I am going to torture you before I kill you, you beast. I'm going to torture you because you, they've heard all the so-called stories. They've let the hate that be God hate. They've listened to all the lies. They've listened to all this. And so they're thinking themselves, you need to be condemned. You need to be judged. You need to be put to death. This is what they're going to say. And they say, well, who best to do it? Because they think that they're what? Doing the will of God. So they say, well, I'm like David. I went to the school, the military school of so-called David. We're the so-called chosen race above all races. When you resist us, you're resisting God Almighty himself. God is with us. That's what they're telling you when they're about to come over and slot and literally, quote unquote, kill you. When I say literal, I mean, they're going to physically kill. They're not going to, quote, destroy you with the so-called word of God. They're not going to say, you know, my weapons aren't carnal. I got the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, girded about with truth, feet shot with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith and the sword, which is the word of God, which is going to destroy everything, destroy the works of the devil. They're like, no, I'm not going to do that. They're like, no, I'm not here to do. I'm not here to, to warn you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm not here to, quote, unquote, destroy the old thing, which is the corrupt flesh and the works of the flesh and death. No, they say I'm here to destroy you because I think I'm better than you. Right. 
They think they're not quite the sinner that you are. And they literally, these people really believe, these fools really believe because of these lies. And don't tell me you don't believe the lies, dude. They think that God is, this, how can they think they're, the, let me ask you guys, this, this is a serious question. How can you sit there and say, well, the people who believe in Judaism don't believe the Trinity, but somehow they think they're the people of God according to what? Based on what? Based on what? Flesh and blood? But all Acts 17, all men that dwell upon the face of earth have made, are made of one blood and the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. All men that dwell upon the earth are made of one blood and the life of the flesh is in the blood. The people who claim to be Jews, they can get a so-called blood transfusion from a person who's from Nigeria. So stop this stupid foolishness that you guys are believing. All men are made of one blood. They're all of the same flesh. If you believe everybody who came from Adam. Now, if you want to believe some of these things that these guys believe where they're trying to say, well, I believe there's a polygenesis. But when they're polygenesis, they're basically saying there was a policy polygenesis in the so-called flesh. No fool. It's people who have been regenerated by the spirit of the spirit in the spirit. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Last Adam, a quickening spirit. It's a spiritual body. We're found in God, a spirit having not our own righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. God is our righteousness. That's what it's talking about. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. That's why we say who pass from death to life who passed from mortal, which is the man Jesus who died was clearly mortal. Romans 8, 11. It says, wherefore, henceforth, since we believe the gospel, know we no man after the flesh because the gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh. But it says we're born after the what? After the spirit, because we've been regenerated, followed in the what? Regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost. As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Led by what? Well, you would, when someone says, I'm, I'm getting instruction. When somebody says, who's the head instructor? Who's the head teacher? Who's the so-called head rabbi? Who's the, who's the chief rabbi? What do they say? Well, he's the head instructor, the head rabbi, the head chief, the commander in chief. What they call him all these things, right? The king, right? King, who's the who's the wisest, right? Who knows all things? And you're like, well, God, God is God is my witness. God is the one who can can instruct me in meekness, instructing those that are what oppose themselves. When you say to the if you were to say to these fools, these fake three Abrahamic faiths, and you say, guess who your enemy is? They would sit there and they would point. All of them would point across at other people. Hey, hey, Islam, who's your biggest enemy? You who believe in Islam, who's your Trinitarian? Who's your biggest enemy? Uh, uh, so-called so-called plain person who claims to be a Jew. Who's your biggest enemy? All these people will point to someone else as being their enemy. But what does the scripture say? In meekness, instructing those that do what? Oppose themselves. That God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him, not them, in spirit and and in truth, that's why it says, no, wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh. Wait a minute. Yet, now, henceforth, after we believe the gospel, the gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to man. What? In the flesh, because all the children of the flesh were born after the flesh. But when we believe the gospel, we pass from death to life. We live according to God, a new creature created in Christ. In the what? In corrupt will see the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We live according to God in the spirit, in God himself. Our life is hid in God, Colossians 3, 3, right? So that's why we don't know the man, Jesus Christ, after we believe the gospel. That's why Paul in Romans 7 is saying, oh, if I do the things that I would not, it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelt in me that is in my flesh dwelling no good thing. Paul is saying, I don't even know that man who you can see who's in the mirror. That's not even me. I'm a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, listen, the word all, all things are become new. These people don't believe. They don't believe all things are becoming. They don't believe that it's born not of flesh, nor of blood, nor the will of man, but of the spirit. They don't believe it's of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth. He that abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither what? 
know him. Wait a minute. People knew the man, Jesus. Jesus had a quote unquote, what he had some so-called brothers after the flesh. He was friendly with the world after the flesh. He led a woman who they said, look, that woman's pretty questionable. I wouldn't be letting her wash my feet if I was you in the flesh. He did all these things that he did in the flesh. And the man, Jesus, he died. What? In the flesh. He was put to death in the flesh. But can God die? Absolutely not. So just because somebody comes through and says, look, I got to save the Trinity. I got to save my idol. I got to make up an argument to save my idol. And he just starts redefining death. Just know that that person is a liar. And the truth, because, you know, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the, it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit of truth dwelleth in you. Now, if any man have not the God is my witness, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit of truth in him, then he is none of his. He's still in the flesh. And remember, the gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh who can't please God because no flesh will go before him. But if they believe, then they pass from death to live according to God in the spirit. I give it to them eternal life. The spirit is life because of righteousness found in him, having not my own righteousness. So you can get people who want to argue all day. The question I have for you is what do you believe? See, you can go and you can see Sam Schumann or wherever the hell his name is. He's going to sit and he's going to argue and he's going to try to defend his false God, just like the Hebrew Israelites are going to try to the so-called black Hebrew. They're going to try to defend their false God. And all the mean, all the while, all these people are trying to do at the come at the end of the day, all they're going to do is they're going to say, well, essentially God is a man. That's all. That, when it comes down to it, all they're saying is God is a man. They just put the word God, man. They said God, they're all they're coming. And this is why when he has to redefine death. And then this is also why he is there. They say, well, what do you mean by no man has seen God? Well, it doesn't really mean that. This doesn't mean that, blah, blah, blah. And then he tries to do this little bait and switch where he's talking about, oh, that's talking about the father. Oh, no, that's talking about the father. Oh, that's talking, no, 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 no. It says, it's talking about Jesus. And just for you guys, just so people can know, Jesus, a spirit, the only wise God, he is the father. That's why he's called the root and the offspring. That's why he's called the first and the last, you know, when Jesus, when he says he's the good shepherd, you want to be, imagine you being a sheep. Now, when Jesus said, you believe not because you're not my sheep and said, when you believe, you believe on him to everlasting life. And he told those who said they were Jews and are not, he says, you believe not because you're not my sheep, right? You're not my sheep. You don't believe you haven't followed instructions in meekness, instructing those that impose themselves that God provincial give them repentance to the not truth. You haven't followed instructions. Therefore, you have not been regenerated and you've not been regenerated, not by works of rightness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, born of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that lived in the body forever. And since you have not been regenerated, you're still corrupt of the corrupt seed. You're not my sheep. You're of the corrupt seed and you're of a bad tree of a bad fruit. That's what you are. You are of your father, the devil, he that committed sin is of the devil. This is what this is what the scriptures are explaining to you. It's explaining not just them, but all the children of the flesh, all the sin, and he that committed sin is of the devil. And it says you cannot serve two masters. So when you have so-called claim to be grace believers, now I totally I'm telling you guys right now, you are definitely saved by grace through faith, not a works that any man should boast. It is a gift. Once you believe and you've been born again, you can't be unborn. Just like in this world, once you're born, you can't be unborn. Once you have the gift of eternal life, you can't lose it. Therefore, you're calling God a liar. But if you have eternal life and you believe it, what is all this stuff that people are talking about? Some do this in your flesh and do that in your flesh. That makes no sense. Your flesh is not eternal. That's why it says when you believe you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit and your life is hid. A life that is hid, as you can ask Sam Schumann about this, what does it mean our life is hid in God? What do you mean we're found in him having not our own righteousness? What do you mean, Sam, can you show me how many people are hid in God? Sam's going to say, no, I can't show you how many people are hid in God. Why can't you do that, Sam? Because it says all those who are born again are found in him. So if I can't see, if I can see you, Sam, I can see your life. I can see you. I, I, I can see you're a person, you're a flesh. Sam, I can see that you're getting old. Sam, I can see, I think you're going to, Sam, I, I don't think, I know you're going to die, Sam. You are going to die. I know that eternal, immortal, it, it, if someone who's eternal doesn't die, someone who's immortal doesn't die. You can try to redefine death all you want, but when he says you pass from death to life, he actually means he's not talking about temporal life. The children of the flesh have temporal life. He's talking about eternal, everlasting life. 
That's what he's talking about. That is the good news. That is the good news. I mean, when you're born, the first time it says you're born in sin. It talks about all this sin and come short. To come short means you have not obtained something. To come short means you have not obtained, you have not achieved. And he's saying you cannot obtain and you cannot achieve it in the flesh. That's why he says all flesh will perish and he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He that committed sin is of the devil. So if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. And the what? Truth's not in you. And those who are the children of the flesh, they don't have the spirit, right? The body without the spirit is dead. We preach the gospel to them that are what? Dead because they don't have the spirit. They have a body. They don't have the spirit of God. They don't have the spirit of truth, the spirit of righteousness. God says, I will not give my glory to another. That's why he's saying that old temple must be what? Destroyed. That old temple must be destroyed. And God is saying, look, you need to be in the temple made without hands. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. You know, when your mama and your daddy got together and decided they want to do some things, they want to move some, they want to get together that night and they want to make a baby. That's them decided they want to do. That's the will of your mama or your daddy or both. One, two, the both. Even in cases of unwanted, somebody wanted it. Obviously, the man wanted it if he took it. Right. So that's the will of man, whether it be one or both. It's the will of man. It was the will of the woman to bring it. But it was the will of somebody to give birth. It was the will of somebody to feed you. It was the will for somebody to raise you. It was the will of somebody to make sure you were safe and try to get you to a certain point. That was the will. Even if it was under slavery, that was the will of man that you get strong so you can go out and work in the fields of cotton. Even in that case, it's the will of man. So you are serving what? Man, and he that committed sin is of the devil. So when you serve man, guess who you serving? He that committed sin is of the what? Oh, man. You know what? Jesus did a lot. He washed the feet of the disciples, y'all. He washed the feet of the disciples. Didn't the man Jesus wash the feet of the disciples? Didn't he do a service to that woman who was caught in adultery, caught in the very act, and they were trying to stone her? Remember that? Remember they said this woman should be stoned. According to the law of Moses, this woman should be stoned. He came to this woman and said, look. Let he that is among you who is without sin cast the first stone. What, what did they do? They left, right? From the oldest to the youngest, they left. Right? They, they left. They were willing to accuse her, but then they excused themselves and said, oop, got to go. Why you got to go? You was just willing to stone this woman. Y'all want to see her get stoned. Everybody gathered around, but then when it says, now it's your time to get stoned, all of a sudden, you know, people like to get stoned, but they don't like to get stoned. They don't, they're like, I don't want to, you taking it too literal. I ain't going to stone myself now. I'll go smoke one, but I ain't, I'll get, i light one, but I ain't going to, don't, don't stone me to death now. Come on now. I got to, hey, I got to go. I got, it's what time is it? It's getting late. Yeah, I tell you, I got to go home here about dinner, about time ready, right, ready, right. See how everybody was willing to stone her? Just like everybody went and saw the man Jesus die. They saw that he, they said, oh, we got a crucifixion taking place. Oh, they, they, they got that, that Jesus getting crucified. And they said, they got, they got two other people going to be right there on the side. One on the left, one on the right. Right. What's going on with the people? What people love these people. They, they, they're drawn. They want to see it. They want to, I want to see the death. I want to see, I want to see people. These are people like, man, I can't imagine, man. This is it for this. This is it. This is it. He, he about to be put to death. Right. So tell me, what is the deal? What is it? Do you guys actually believe that God, the king, eternal, immortal, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. By the way, talking about Jesus, the only potentate. Talking about he's the only wise guy. It's talking about Jesus. And so what these guys are doing, they say, hmm, let's see. Um, let's just say there's a plurality. There's no plurality. It's the fact of the matter is God is the head, the savior of the body, and there are many members in him. And that seed, which is one seed, God is saying, nope. He that joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. He's saying that all those who are new creatures are going to be found in me. And he says the decision, which I mean, the, the plan, God saying it was always God's God knowing God, knowing all things, saying, look, the old, there's none righteous. No, not one. There's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good instead of not right. Manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. And he's saying the only way that you're going to be justified, the only way that you're going to be the only way that you're going to be righteous, the only way whom he justified them, he also glorified. He's saying no flesh of glory before him is to be found in me. And then he says he that joined to the Lord is one spirit. That's what God is saying, guys. Um, again, I've gone on and on and on about this. Many people are going to get very upset about this. You're going to go and you're going to say, oh, you got to go. You're going to run and you're going to be like, please save my doctrine. Save my doctrine. You know what? At the end of the day, you're going to hear Sam. You're going to hear you're going to hear me say something and then you're going to have to say, well, I'm going to seek a proof of Christ speaking in, 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 in Sam. I got to seek a proof of Christ speaking in Marcus. 
Who's telling the truth? It says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit of truth. I can't find God as flesh. I do see them indirectly trying to say that, though. But the scriptures don't say God is flesh. Maybe you maybe they'll come out. Maybe there's a model. Maybe they've got modified the Bible versions now where they do it. Now, the way that they infer it is by changing chosen generation, meaning those who've been regenerated, born of incredible seed to chosen race. They've changed chosen generation in the scriptures to chosen race. You know, that's a lie, because in the same chapter, it says it's a spiritual house, a lively priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. When it says spiritual sacrifice it's talking about living sacrifices. So when you understand it through spiritually discerning, you understand, oh, Abraham and Isaac is talking about, no, when he's talking about the, the, the sword or the quote knife, and he's talking about the ram caught in the thicket. Oh, I get it. It's talking about the gospel. And he's talking about offering up spiritual. He's talking about just destroy the enemy, which is death. He says, cry aloud and spare not. And he says, don't even spare, don't spare man nor woman and child. Don't spare anyone in your household. Preach the word. The sword is the word of God. Rightly divide the word of God. He says, preach it in season and out of season. He says, begot he us by the word of truth that we may be a what? Kind of first fruits who come in whose name? Jesus of his creatures who are found in who? Him who's the head, the savior of the what? Body, the spirit. God is a spirit. And the bride say what? Come because as God, you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me. Right. We have the mind of Christ. Right. Spiritually minded, spiritually minded. There's no hypostatically unifying the spiritual mind with the carnal mind. You are a fool if you think that God is carnally minded. You are a fool if you think that God is flesh. God is not flesh. God comes fashion in the likeness. Thou art a God that hideth thyself. I mean, listen, the reason why it says no, we know man after the flesh. Though we though we have known in the past Christ after the flesh, because after the flesh, everybody knew him because all men are basically the family of men. Right. Everybody's brethren, according to the flesh, after the what? First Adam. Right. It says you want to be in that last Adam. Right. And this says, uh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Why don't we know him anymore? Oh, because once you're in the spirit and not in the outward man flesh, then you're what? of God. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Why? Because he's in the flesh, right? And it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, this is, this goes along with the gospel in 1 Peter 2, 4, 6. This video is going to be something completely different. Now it's changed. Um, For this cause was the gospel preached to them that are dead. No, we know man after the flesh, right? That they may be judged according to men in the flesh. Without controversy, grace and mystery of God as God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the what? Spirit. But live according to God in the spirit. Know we no man after the flesh, right? Know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him what? No more. These guys are trying to tell you, you know, the reason why God came is because God, he can't, he tried to say, he, he reversed the curse. This fool. No. See, Romans 8, 11 tells you that that mortal body. Remember, the mortal body, things which are seen are temporal. The mortal body is a mortal body. We go to 2 Corinthians 14. You got to understand, guys. God is merciful, but God is not. God's not going to show mercy to anyone who doesn't believe the truth, who tries to call him a liar. You're trying to these this Trinitarians are trying to rob God of his glory. That's all they're trying to do. And you guys, you, you think it's real slick. But see, think about what think about what's being said here. No flesh will glory before him, but he has a chosen race. How stupid do you have to be? No flesh will glory before him, but he has a chosen race. <laughs> right. Oh, he's pleased with David, but they in the flesh can't please. Oh, he's pleased with Isaac, but they in the flesh. Oh, he's pleased with Jacob, but they in the flesh can't please him. Oh, Israel, Israel, they worship him in Israel, uh, but he's not worshiped with men's hands. Right. You don't see why your pastor's lying to you. If you don't understand why the children of the flesh are lying to you because they want you to come to the building made with hands and collect your money. And let me tell you something. If you were to die today, if you were walking around today and these guys, these vultures would definitely be fighting over. Oh, did you leave your house to the church? Right. 
Did you leave your house to the church? They go to the scriptures. They find a way to like to manipulate the word and say, well, no, you should leave your house to the church. But, but pastor, why would I do that? It said, love not the world, nor the things in the world. If any man love the world, love the father's not in. Store not for just treasure on earth and where thieves break in and mount to corrupt. And the pastor be like, yeah, that's true. So is there somebody steal it? Why don't you give it to the church for safekeeping? Right? They don't, they don't, they're not explaining to you that when you're born again, you're born from heaven. You're no longer. This is why Paul said, that's no more I. Paul is saying, I am no longer a child of the flesh. All of my so-called kinsmen, according to the flesh, after the flesh, in the world, in darkness, light had no fellowship with them. He's saying, that's no more I. That's what Paul is saying. He's not saying, well, you know what I did? I quote, unquote, went out. No, he's saying, look, no, no, no. That's no more I. And see, this is what you need to understand, because if you don't, what's going to happen not only are they going to finagle you out of your money while you're here, they're going to keep teaching you some lie and you're not even going to believe so you can get the gift of eternal life, which is which is a free gift. You're like, why are they doing it? Because, well, well guys, politically, if I want to use politics and tell you God has a chosen race and that we got to bless God's chosen race, or if I don't bless God's chosen race, I'll be cursed. Well, aren't they cursed children? He that committed sin is of the devil. Well, guess what? Your so-called Trinitarians tell you you still sin. So they're basically saying you're of the devil. It says you can't serve two masters. But it says God is God that worketh in me. And it says it's the self-same spirit. And it says God whom I serve with my spirit. Meaning it's God that worketh in me. It says he that born of God cannot sin because it's God that worketh in him to do unto of his good pleasure. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. The works that I do, ye do also and greater works than these because I go into the Father. He said, what do you mean greater works? Oh, because it's a temple not made with hands, right? The spiritual house, a holy priesthood, right? Your lively stones built up a spiritual house, temple made without hands. It's talking about the true tabernacle in the heavens. That's what it's talking about. That's what it's talking about. They hate that. They hate, they absolutely hate it. <laughs> they hate, I'm telling you, these Trinitarians hate God. They're going to sit here and tell them something. You're a child of the devil because you don't believe the, the, the Trinity lie. They basically, here's a translation. If you don't believe God's a white man, then, you, then you're a devil. This is what they're saying. Oh, that's so funny how that works. And also, if I don't believe God has a chosen race above all races, and you don't believe in replacement theology, that God has a chosen race, a race above all races, who happen to be what? Let me guess, each producer after his kind. So if the chosen race is white, and of course God's white too, hence the Trinity. Oh, let me guess. Oh, the Catholics. Oh, that's right. They killed and did papal bulls and did colonization. Oh, let me guess. Zionism, killing, murdering, doing genocide. Oh, who? Oh, that's right. Islam. Oh, yes. Another war profiteering religion that kills people for money. And then they have the ignorant masses under each one of these religions. The ignorant masses under each one of these religions who really believe these people who are up, the, up at the so-called top spheres of the pyramid scam. They think these people truly care for them and love them. Right? Yet, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Believe on him to everlasting life. Destroy the works of the, of the devil. Death, where is thy sting? Great, where is thy victory? I give unto them eternal life. Tell me, guys, do I, need to, do I need to petition? Do I need to petition Congress? Do I need to vote? Do I need to go? What works in my flesh can I do to give you eternal life? Tell me that, guys. What works can I do in my, in fact, if I'm still in the flesh, I'm in the way, aren't I? If I'm in the flesh, that means I don't have the spirit, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So if I have the flesh, if I'm still in the flesh, if I'm still in the first Adam, the gospel's priest to them that are dead, then I don't have eternal life. But if I believe the gospel and God gives me the gift of eternal life that I receive you the spirit by the works of the law, the hearing of faith, from faith to faith, to judge and live by faith. I give it to them eternal life. They shall never perish. Now that I have eternal life, Christ in me, the hope of glory, the spirit of God, the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, since it's God that worked in me, now you can be offered what? The living water. So I, I'm in the way if I'm still in the flesh, right? I, I'm opposing myself if I'm still in the flesh. It's because I'm like, I want to save my life in this world. That's why I, I can't save my life in this world. But since I, since I, 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 I cherish or, or I love temporal, carnal, earthly treasures, which 
which are perishable goods and perishable riches, then I'm a fool to see the gospel as being foolish, right? If any man be wise in this world, let him become a fool, right? And so people who don't want to believe the truth, who don't want to believe the gospel, of course they hate the idea that God's a spirit. Of course they're like, Jesus is not the father, a spirit, right? The only wise God. Of course they're going to say that. But that's why you say to them, wait a minute, things which are seen uh, also quicken your mortal bodies. Know we no man after the flesh, though we know Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Old things are passed away because, look, we're not in the flesh. Things which are seen are temporal. Things which are seen are temporal. Oh, they saw the man Jesus who they murdered for filthy lucre's sake. Right? Didn't Judas? Judas saw him. He, didn't he betray him with a kiss? Right? People saw him. All kinds of sinners saw the man Jesus. Sinners saw the man Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. Apparently, people saw him and they got paintings of him all over in Europe. So I guess we can say, guys, the testimony of his Europe is that Europeans, all those people who painted the face of Jesus, they have not sinned. Right? Because it says, he that abideth in him sinneth not. Whoso abideth in who? If any man be in Christ. He that abideth in him, not them, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. Apparently, Europe has seen him, and therefore they known him, and therefore Europe has not sinned. That's why they're saying salvations of the Jews. Because if you haven't been born again, and you don't need to really believe the gospel, but you're somehow the apple of God's eye. Well, my goodness, I don't want to call, I'm not going to call, I'm not going to call the tree of life wicked and evil and bad fruit. I'm not going to say the word of God is corrupt. The seed of God is corrupt. And if each producer after his kind and you're a chosen race, by golly, Wally, geez, whiz, Wally, I can't say that God's chosen race are sinners like all other men. It's for them to stand and judge me, right? Curse of Ham is in effect, right? We must destroy those black Hebrew Israelites, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you guys, you've fallen for the okadote. You've been Shawshank. You've been bamboozled. You've been bewitched, right, by these devils. They ain't sitting there and they told you they sound real impressive. They, you, you like, they sound, you like, I love this guy. This guy seems like he know a lot, boy. It sound real impressive. And what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to say to yourself, I've listened to you explain away clear passages in the scriptures. I've listened to you say redefine death. <laughs> I've listened to you redefine death. I've listened to you say, what do you mean no man has seen God at any time? You said that's not true. But then, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.18 said things which are seen are temporal, things which are not seen are eternal. Not seen are eternal. Now what are you gonna what are you gonna what are you gonna talk about that? Because you're gonna say, well, that's talking about knowledge. Okay, well, knowledge, I mean, you can speak lies and you can speak truth. So what are you talking about? Do you see words? I'm speaking words, he's speaking words. Right? I'm 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 saying the gospel, he's saying the gospel, but who has the spirit? See, you can get a parrot to say the gospel. You can get a parrot to parrot the gospel. You can, you can have the gospel just running on a tape recorder. I mean, okay, but it's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit, it's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life, right? Right? So what, are you, what the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about? How do you get around things which are seen are temporal? Because again, dead fish, eaten, honeycomb. Right? Eaten. How do you get around it? I love how they say, well, you know, in the Old Testament, there was what they call Christophanies. Christophanies, you know, God would appear like in, like in the form of a man. And you're like, oh, OK, uh, it makes sense since it says it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And but I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But he comes in the fashion of what? In the fashion of a man. And then they say, well, what kind of fashion of man does he come in? Well, you know, God has a chosen race, right? Uh, what do you mean he has a chosen race? Uh, because it says God's not a man. He just comes fashion. Well, but God has a chosen. They're just saying that Negroes have gone out of style, y'all. They're saying their fashion doesn't fade. 
They're saying that the Negro fashion is cheap and disposable, but they're saying they, they, they're high fashion. They're, that's what they're, they're saying. They're high fashion. All they're saying, the Trinity is saying that there's high, they, they, they said, they say that, they said, we, we, we qualify it three times. We high fashion, right? They, they say they're high fashion. That's what they do. That's what they've done. This is 119. I'm going I'm I'm to end this soon. I was going to do this to show something else, but now that I've gone into it, I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, let's go. Let's go with the Jesus being the father. You know, one thing I listened to, I said, I want to hear this Sam say this. I'm going to do a shorter video on this. I want to see if he's because he, Sam was very quick. He's like, well, there's three distinct persons and Jesus is not the father. So we go to Sam's going to go. And what Sam's going to do now is Sam is going to make another video saying, well, what does father mean? I mean, <laughs> he says, well, Sam has done what is death. What is no man has seen God at any time? He didn't redefine death. He didn't redefine no man has seen God at any time. And I noticed that Renee Rowland is, is like a complete parrot, parroting Sam. And then uh, it's like these guys went to the commentary and said, how do we get around this? I mean, this is proving that we liars. How are we going to keep profiteering? I mean, how are we going to keep playing God? Because we, we claim that we claim we God people. And we saying we saying we spoke with his people, saw us face to face. And that's why we are descendants of, of, of the holy people. Right, we're the descendants of the holy people. Uh, you're the descendants of the holy people. Uh, you mean like like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? You mean like like the gospel priest before unto Abraham? You mean like Abraham believed God, and uh, once you believe, apparently you believe on Him to everlasting life means you're born again of incorruptible seed by the Spirit. It didn't say you're born of flesh and blood. It says you're born of the Spirit, guys. I mean, it's it's ridiculous, and He's called the Father of Spirits, right? God. God knows how to write, okay? God can come in the fashion of a man and say, well, yep, you just killed my quote-unquote possessive, the creature mortal body, but you're not killing God, okay? And it says, uh, there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had, oh, wait a minute, seven angels. Oh, no man has seen God at any time. Well, okay, who's seen him? Seen of angels. Uh, without controversy, grace, the mystery of God, as God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, priest of the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up in glory. Priest of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Those who are dead. Well, who are those people who claim to be Jews who don't believe the gospel? Uh, they're they're dead because the gospel's priest of them that are dead. So they're saying that they're gen they're saying they're Jews, but it says the gospel's priest of them that are dead. So do the people who claim to be Jews? Do they have eternal life? No, because the children of the flesh don't have eternal life. Children of the flesh are not children of God. Right. But God comes fashioned in the likeness of children of the flesh. But the children of the flesh are not the children of God. God's called the father of spirits. Right. But there's people who claim to be Jews. They say they're a light to all nations. Do they have the light of life? No. They, do they believe on uh, God? They believe God the spirit named Jesus? No, they don't. Yet they claim that the Trinity, somehow these guys who are the three fake Abrahamic faith, they claim, oh, we don't believe in the Trinity. Seems like you do because you claim to be the people of God by what? How, how are you related to God in what way, given that light had no fellowship with darkness? To be in sin is to be in darkness, fool. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, coming, saying, talk with me, saying, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Now, you got to ask Sam, Sam. Okay. Sam. Listen. Listen. No man has seen. Listen. Talking about Jesus, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, which no man has seen nor can see. Jesus. The next day, John see a Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. Right? And look upon, looking upon Jesus as he walked and said, behold, the lamb. He said he looked upon him. What do you mean? It says Jesus is the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. It says of Jesus that he's the only potentate who only hath the immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach, where no man has seen nor can see. It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about Jesus. So you got to ask, it says, and look, it says, this is behold the lamb of God. Now, can the lamb of God die? No. Nope. The lamb of God can't actually, can God die? No. So then Sam, 
What's that guy? Sam, Sham, Sham, whatever. He says, let's redefine. <laughs> let's just redefine death, y'all. Let's just redefine death. Okay, well, God's God of living and not the dead. So when, when the man Jesus died, what happened? What happened? God's the God of the living and not the dead. So when Jesus died, what happened? Then he said, oh, one part of the Trinity, we're going to have to disavow that part of the Trinity. God's God living and not the dead, and you died for three days. Right? Right? You were, you were dead. What happened? Well, that, that wasn't me. That was me coming in the likeness of the me that you could see. But that me that you could see was not really me because I'm not the me that you can see. Because the me that you can see is not the me that is hid because the me that you can see is mortal. The me that you can't see is eternal. And I'm not a mortal that I should die. Neither the son of man that I'd have to be brought back from the dead. All right. So. God, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the lamb of God, right? Root and offspring. How can you be the shepherd and the the lamb at the same time. As many as are led by the spirit. And then it says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can you be a shepherd and. I know people hate that spiritual. Though. Ooh, boy, that spiritual house. People hate that spiritual drink, that spiritual meat. That that dead fish, though, was that dead fish spiritual? And did all drink the same. Look, 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 y'all. Let's go in here now. Listen. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. Let whosoever come and take a drink of the water life freely for they drank of that spiritual rock. Remember, you can't eat at the Lord's table and the table of devils. You can't drink of the Lord's cup and the cup of devils. Didn't Jesus eat with sinners? Come on now. Didn't Jesus eat with sinners? What do you mean you can't drink of the Lord's cup and the cup of devils? Jesus ate with the sinners. He all the sin and come true. Jesus ate with sinners. The woman washed his feet with her hair. She was a sinner. Right? All did all. But did everybody drink that spiritual drink, y'all? Did everybody eat that spiritual meat? Oh, wait a minute. That was some special fish that came. It was a special dead fish. Right. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness, overthrown by what? All manner of wind of doctrine. Oh, boy, people tossed to and fro with them, the raging waves and people foaming out their shame of lies. Right. Just like their father going around seeking whom they, whom they devour with their devouring words. He said, beware the leaven. He said, look, I'm going to offer you the bread. And so that's why you got you got Sam. You got Renee, you got all these Trinitarians said, look, I'm going to offer you some bread. They're like, they're like, we're not Trinitarians, we're not Catholics. Holy Mary, mother of God. I'm like, boy, you is Catholic. You need to stop your line, boy. Stop that line now. Huh? Stop it. You keep, you believe, you believe God's three white men. You need to stop it. Well, no, we're not saying God's a white man. Oh, oh okay, okay. Wink, wink. Okay, all right. Okay, wink, wink, wink. But with many of them, God was not pleased. Look, they in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh cannot please. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, neither does he worship with man's hands. They that are in the flesh without faith is impossible. From faith to faith, the just shall live. I give unto them eternal life by faith. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Things which are seen are temporal. Marcus is so difficult. You know, it's really, really complicated. No, it's not complicated. It's what you, this world that you can see is temporal. You can see children of the flesh. You can see cars. You can see buildings made with hands. You can see all these things. You see that the earth is shaking and movable. And it says these things which can be shaken are not the kingdom of God. That's what it's saying. These things which can be shaken are not the kingdom of God. All you got to do is go and say, I want to know, is there an earthquake in the world today? Is there an earthquake? Oh, my goodness. This world is shaking. You know, you see men and they tremble and they're like, oh, 
ah, ah, ah. The, the, when she had the birth baby, she was contraction and there's a, a contraction is like a quaking and a shaking and a this and a that. That little child born into this world is born into what? Darkness, right? The light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not. Boy, you don't know the blasphemy of those who claim to be Jews or not. You don't know the blasphemy of these Trinitarians by now. You need to understand. You need to get a, you need to get a clue. You need, boy, spin a wheel and buy a vow. But as many of them, but with many of them, God was not pleased. He said with many of them. Did he say with all of them? He said many of them because some did believe. Some believed. Many did not. Many, many did not believe God. Many, because there's few who are going to believe. Few, right? Now, these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things. Oh, lust after the flesh, the pride of life, all these kind of things, right? Love not the world, nor the things in the world. As they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters. Uh, let's see, the graven image, whether male or female. Uh, the Trinity. Right, right. Okay. Well, Marcus, are you telling me? I'm telling you, you got to be born again. I'm telling you that once you're born again, you're a child of God and you're sealed and sanctified, found in him. And you cannot sin because you're in God and God's in you. And God says, I'll never leave you to forsake you. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you it's a free gift, not a work system. any mention boast. I'm telling that you're saved in an instant, in a moment. And I'm telling you when you're born again, you have eternal life. You pass from death to life and you live according to God and the spirit. And you cannot sin. Your life is hidden God. I am telling you this. But guess what? Guess who hates this message? People who claim to be grace believers, right? They hate this message. It says, neither be ye adulterers as were some of them as are written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them. It says, no fornicator, no idolater shall inherit the kingdom of God. That's what it says, guys. And it says, and such were some of you. Such were some of you, right? Not to let us commit fornication. He that born of God cannot sin. And some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Three and twenty thousand. Ooh wee. Never let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. When he said, remember he told those people, claimed, they claimed, he said, he called them, guys, how are they the chosen race when, when God says, generation of vipers they're like well generation of vipers that's just talking about a certain select group of pharisees now you're trying to say well this no i thank god i'm not like the pharisees no he that committed sin is of the devil and all the sin so stop trying to pull you notice how they pull this little game they like to play there's a little game they try to play where they're like well when sometimes it's talking about those fake people who claim to be Jews or not they're like oh he's just talking to the pharisees and the chief rulers right that's what they say gotta read it in context you're like, okay, yeah, but that doesn't mean that the other people who weren't talking, anybody who's not born again, commit sin and they're of the devil. That's why these so-called Trinitarians and liars, that's why they don't tell, when you say he that born of God cannot sin, he that abideth in him uh, does not sin, whoever committed sin has not seen him, neither known him. And they're like, well, no, that don't kind of mean what it says. And then they start redefining seeing, they restart redefining death, anything to save the lie of the Trinity, just anything, anything. How can I save the lie of the Trinity? Okay. Neither murmur as some of them also murmur and were destroyed of the destroyer. Oh, is that clear enough for you? Is that clear enough? Is that clear enough? Flee from idolatry. Behold, listen, there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit. Israel after the flesh includes the whole world. You're like, Marcus, I have never heard anyone say this. And by the way, Marcus, you haven't shown me that Jesus is the father. You started in Revelation 21, 9. Now you're going into all this other stuff. Well, I'm going to show you because, you know, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. But just say Israel after the flesh. This is the perfect example. Remember, know we no man after the flesh. Though we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Now, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature Old things are passed away. No, we know man after the flesh. Behold, all things are become new. We know him after the spirit. As men are led by the spirit, no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the 
good shepherd spirit. It means they're led by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. Okay. Now, before I go on, let's go ahead and prove Galatians 4.26. Let's go ahead and prove that Jesus is the father. Come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Jerusalem, which is above, is free as mother of us all. So Jerusalem, which is above, is free as mother of us all. Jerusalem above is free as mother of us all. And it says, uh, the bride, the lamb's wife, he carried me away. Where, guys? In the spirit. There's no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It will be the spirit of God dwelling in you who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. How can I be walking after the spirit as many as are led by the spirit? The Lord is my shepherd. How could Jesus be before me, but then I'm like found in him. Any man be in Christ. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And then it says when we follow in the regeneration, it says each person must be born again and they must be a new creature in Christ too. So how can it be that he's before me? yet in me. Exactly. And then it says, I don't know him after the flesh once I'm born again. I know no man after the flesh, including the man, Jesus Christ. Things which are seen are temporal. Okay. Now it's saying that the lamb of God has a wife. I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. We just saw the lamb of God, right? He carried me away in the spirit, justified in the spirit, manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. He says, he took me to a great and high mountain and showed me the lamb's wife, which is the great city, Holy Jerusalem. Apparently it's not in the Middle East. Apparently flesh and blood cannot inherit because he said he took me away in the spirit, right? Then he said, listen, Jerusalem, the lamb's wife, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all, right? Is not will be is the mother of us all. The mother of us all who? Who are in the spirit. We're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Because of what? Incorruptible seed, the word of God, liveth and abideth in us. And he'll never leave us nor forsake us, right? It's talking about this. He's, and then it says, look, we're the children of promise. I'm talking about the promise of eternal life, which God promised before the world began and cannot lie. And it says, oh, Israel after the flesh. But then he that was born after the flesh, Israel after the flesh, persecute him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now, nevertheless, what said the scripture, cast out Israel after the flesh and her son, for the son of the bondwoman, we be Abraham's seed and never in bondage to any man, right? Shall not be heir, flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God with the son of the free woman. So brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman after the flesh, but of the free. The law of the spirit of life in Christ that made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. He that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he, he himself is judge of no man. Okay? So, free. Free from what? Sin and death. Right? Okay. So, now, I'm going to show you now that I've showed you that Jesus is the Father. And it says, well, what do you mean Jesus is the Father? Now... We just saw, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Remember talking about the spiritual drink, spiritual rock that follow them, right? First, led by the spirit, spiritual rock that follow last, right? And then if you're in him, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, right? And it says, look, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Oh, who's the head, the savior of the body? Spirit and the bride say come. Who's the most high, guys? On the body, if you look in the mirror, what's the most high? The head. Because the head governs the what? Body. The head governs the body. The crown goes on the what? Head. The head governs the what? Body. Well, we're in the body and there are many members, right? Found in him. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. It's a spiritual body, right? With the spirit of God, right? His spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the what? Exactly. Children of flesh aren't children of God, guys. So, we went through that. Now, what were we at now? We were here, and I want to show you that there's Israel. Let me show you. Spiritual rock that followed them last, and that rock was Christ. See? He that spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Justified in the spirit. Listen. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit justified in the spirit. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Know we no man after the flesh, 
Though we've known Christ as flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. If any man be Christ, he's a new creature. There's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, right? Okay, so it makes sense. All right, now I want to show you, it's talking about Israel after the flesh. It tells you Israel after the flesh. I'm going to show you that Israel after the flesh is the whole world. Their whole lie of a chosen race is just so bogus. And let me show you. We go, we're talking about Israel and Adam. Remember, there's two Adams, right? There's two Adams. You want to be in the last one. You start out in the first Adam of this world in the dust, right? When the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, what were we just read? Israel, born after the flesh, shall not inherit what? The promise. And so the promise is eternal life. And so if you have eternal life, you have to be in what? An eternal kingdom. And that kingdom is what? It come not with observation because things which are seen are temporal. So these liars of the fake three Abrahamic faiths who are war profiteers, of course, they're going to lie to you and say, oh, no, no, we're not trying to fool anybody with our fake lying signs and wonders. No, this isn't colonization. We're done with that phase of the so-called curse of Ham. The hell they are done with that phase of the curse of Ham. They love money, filthy lucre. They bring forth death. They're extorting you for money. They're the ones who are telling you at your so-called lying churches and buildings made with hands, which God doesn't dwell in. And then they tell you to bring your money and do the works of your flesh to offer to God, which that's funny. God's not receiving the works of your hands. He even tells you that in the scriptures. And he says, he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Now he's even worship with men's hands. And he says, what can you give to me? I've made all these things. What, what the hell can you offer God? And he said, you got to offer up what I've given you. I give it to them eternal life. And he's saying, you offer me back what I've given you, which is, is God the work within you to do into what was good? If it's God the work within me to do into what was good pleasure, and he says, I give into them eternal life, and he says, offering up living sacrifices, then, oh my goodness, God, oh, my word will not return unto me void. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Wait a minute. In the beginning was the Father, the word was with the Father, and the word was the Father. Oh, there's no, to us, there is but one God, the Father. But I just showed you that Jesus is the Father, right? That's why it says to, he said to the son, thy throne, O God, is a sepulcher of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness, justified in the spirit. Whom he justified, them he also what? Glorified, no flesh or glory before him, right? So now it's talking about this Israel. When the most high divided the nations, their inheritance. Remember, flesh and blood cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God. And corruption cannot inherit in corruption. Hence, you must be born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and what? abideth he that abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth hath not seen him neither known him he that are born of god cannot sin because his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he's born of the incorruptible seed the word of god that liveth and abideth forever he's a good tree he's a good fruit on the good tree born of the incorruptible good good seed which was the word of god which was preached to them and they believed that receive you the spirit by the works of law and the hearing of or the hearing of faith right believe on him to everlasting life so he says those of us who've been born again, the children of God, who are the children of the promise, are kind of for the seed. He's saying that all of us who have eternal life, if any man have not the spirit, the spirit is life because of righteousness. He says, we're not of this world. Light had no fellowship with darkness. And when he says light had no fellowship with darkness, he's not saying the white trinity and the chosen race are a race above all races. That's not what he's telling you. That's what these lying sign and Trinitarian liars are telling you with their so-called racialized God, right? So you can believe them. You can, if you want, if, look, you already believe a lie. This is what you don't seem to understand. Here's what you don't seem to grasp. You already start out believing a lie anyway. Children of the flesh all believe lies to begin with. If you didn't believe a lie, then why would the truth need to be preached to you? That's why it says in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. He's saying the only reason why you don't have eternal life is because you don't know the truth. And if you do know the truth, why don't you believe the truth? If you don't believe the truth, it's not that you were, if, if you don't believe the truth, it's either because you're ignorant of the truth, but once the truth has been shown to you, it's because you are willfully ignorant and you simply reject the truth. The only reason why you would reject the truth God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in the spirit and the truth is because you want to believe a lie and you want to think that you can do something in your flesh. So you're saying, don't tell me that in my flesh told a no good thing. But then you guys are so dumb that you're sitting there saying, well, maybe it says in my flesh told a no good thing, but that doesn't apply to God's chosen race. You're dumb. So you missed the whole point of let he that is among you who is without sin, all that sin and come short, he that committed sin is of the devil. God's children aren't the devil. Light had no fellowship with darkness. 
you just missed the whole point of being born again. You missed the whole point of who God is. You missed the whole point of he that the born of God cannot sin. You missed the whole point of being found, you know, sheep found in him, having not their own righteousness. You missed the whole point of being clothed in his righteousness. You missed the whole point. And because you missed the point, you don't believe that God can come fashion in the likeness of anyone. And that's why when I come to you and I say, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me, since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me to reveal his son in me, I preached him amongst the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood because it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit of truth. God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. Is God the work within me to do unto will of his good pleasure? And this is the will of him that sent me, that you believe on the one that he sent. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Go ye into all nations, preach the word in season and out of season, so that people can believe and be born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Be fruitful and what? Multiply. It's just that you don't believe and you don't want to believe. This is what you need to understand. So it's not as though the word of God had taken none effect. They're not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they're the seed of Abraham are they all children. That is in Isaac shall thy seed be called. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. The children of the promise of eternal life, which God promised before the world began and cannot lie. It's the spirit that bears witness, the spirit of truth, are counted for the seed. Begot he us by the word of truth that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Right? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. You're not in the flesh. Behold, all things have become new, but in the spirit. Last Adam, a what? Quickening spirit. When the Most High divided the nation, sheep, goats, their inheritance, Flesh and blood cannot inherit. Corruption cannot inherit incorruption, right? When he, not they, separated the sons of Adam. Separated. These guys can't even tell you who the last Adam is. You say the last Adam is a quickening spirit. They say, oh, well, that doesn't mean. He's called the father of spirits. He says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Says he doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Says they that in the flesh can't please God. He says he's not worshiped with men's hands. He says my sheep never perish. And you're like, but what is death? Well, maybe death doesn't mean death. And maybe things which are seen, maybe they're, maybe they're eternal. That's not what it says in 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says things which are not seen are eternal. Things which are seen are temporal. It says no man has seen God at any time. It says he's an eternal God, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Speaking of Jesus, a spirit who's God, the head, the savior of the body, the spirit and the bride say, come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And the lamb's wife is what? Mother of all those who've been born of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that lived in the body forever. Right. So clearly Jesus, a spirit who is God, is the father of all his bride's children. This goes without, this is, if I tell you, guys, come on, come on. When it talks about this, when the most high divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds, bounds. How do you get to heaven, guys? Can flesh and blood inherit the kingdom of God? Can corruption inherit incorruption? Tell me, Nicodemus. Right? These Trinitarians will have you walking around here talking about some, well, one day Jesus will come back, but he's not here now. Well, what are you here to tell me, Trinitarian? If you're not, if Jesus isn't with you, if it's not Christ in you, the hope of glory, if you're not here to reveal Christ in you, the hope of glory, then what the hell are you here to tell me? I'm here to tell you that God is a white man, three white men, in fact. That doesn't sound like good news. I'm here to tell you that God has a chosen race, a race above all races. Negro, I'm here to tell you there's no such thing as replacement theology, Negro. They're a, they're a race above all races, Negroes. They're going to lord over you, Negro. That, that's odd. So let me get this right. 
You're saying they're the apple of God's eye? Therefore, you're saying they that are in the flesh can please God. So you're saying the Israel after the flesh are the, are the children of God. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices partaker of the altar? What I say then, that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Well, didn't Jesus talk about how they, they got to eat of his... He died for sinners, did he not? Didn't he? Didn't Jesus, wouldn't he sacrifice because they love the world and the things in the world? Weren't they idolaters who said if he keeps telling, if he keeps going on like this, everybody will believe after him. They're afraid the whole world's going to go after him. Like, oh, everybody's going to believe on him. Everybody's going to get regenerated. That's what they're afraid of. Isn't that what their fear was? But he says, listen, the gospel's preached to them that are dead. Listen, without controversy, great the mystery of God as God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the what? Spirit, seen of angels, preached to the what? Gentiles. Listen, I say these things. Listen. I know them to say they're Jews or not, guys. That the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, ooh, hey, are you guys starting to see? He says, if my kingdom were this world, then will my servants fight that I might not be given over to the what? Right? What happened? You think you can just say, well, I'm going to have somebody else do my dirty work? No, let his blood be on us and our children. Isn't that what they said? He that committed sin is of the devil. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Guys, I'm not telling you they're greater sinners than other men according to the law. Oh, but there's one sin. There's one. There's an unforgivable sin. You know what that sin is? Of sin because they believe not on me. You have to have the right God and you have to have the right gospel. You cannot attribute the works of God to the what? To the devil. Right? So because they love the world, they thought, you know, they, these, these fools thought. They really said in their mind that they're the people of God. This is what these fools really think. Till this day, these fools think they're the people of God. They say when they suffer, it's different, right? Oh, when something happens to us, six million. Oh, it's a great, the great tragedy, right? The great tragedy. But what happens when somebody dies in the transatlantic slave trade? What happens when the Native Americans die? What happens when other people die in Europe, in Asia, in the Americas, in the world? You remember the story about the tower? He said, lest ye repent, ye shall also likewise perish. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves that God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The children of the flesh who perish are not the children of God. My sheep never perish. I give it some eternal life, everlasting life. Oh, but they sacrificed and I know them that say they're Jews or not. It says that the things which the Gentiles sacrificed, they sacrificed to devils. What was told to them? What was told to them? Let me help you because some of you guys aren't going to. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. Uh, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. Right? He that committed sin is of the devil. Jesus died for who? We just judged that if one died for all, then we're all dead. He died for our sins. He died for sinners. You don't like that, do you? 
Marcus, I, my pastor never told me that. Let me ask you guys this. Do you have the living sacrifice? Do you have the living, receive ye the spirit is life because of righteous through the works of the law or the hearing of faith? Because they put him to death under the what? Law. Using the what? Law. He was made to be sin under the what? Curses any man that hangeth on a tree. Law, right? Don't you agree with that? Weren't they accusers while excusing and accusing one another? Right? Didn't their conscience bear witness against them when they said that woman was caught in the very act? But then when it says, let he that is among you without sin, cast the first stone, didn't they leave? From the eldest to the young? Didn't they leave? Right. So who, who planned and who plotted? Who took counsel? Who gave them counsel? Who counseled to betray Jesus? Who counseled? Who planned and said, let's go give money to this guy, this guy Judas. Let's go give money to him. Who said, like, wait a minute, let's go. We're going to work with the government. Who's doing that? Let's say, hey, let's use the government and say, look how we can work together. and We can do these things. And here's how we can do this and that and all this kind of stuff. Just let us keep our place in our nation. Right. Who who did that? Who said that? Who loved? Who esteemed that lovely? Who said we have no king but Caesar? Who said that? Who's, who's, who said, is it lawful to pay tribute unto Caesar? Who said that? Who was always trying to use cunning words and devices to entrap and ensnare? Who did that? Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God. You can't serve two masters. This is what they're trying to trap. And they're like, is it lawful? We pay these taxes, we work, we use our work, we do our hard earned labor, we labor in our flesh, we go to work, and then we gotta go give some of this hard earned money. We gotta go pay it to Caesar. Who held the money bags? What were they trying to do? See, they figured they would catch him because it says, you know, you can't serve God and what? You can't have two masters. You can't serve two masters. He that committed sin is a servant of sin. Jesus said this plainly. He that committed sin is a servant of sin. He that committed sin is of the devil. Ye serve your father. You're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a what? What happened? What did they do? They said, we gotta have, we gotta have to sacrifice him. What did that man say? Better that one, what? Than the whole nation perish. That's what they said. But then Jesus said, what? My sheep, they never perish. But Jesus died for the sins of all men, all. We thus judge that one died for all, then we're all dead. He died for sinners, yet Every sinner that he died for is still going to perish. Make no mistake about it. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. The legal sin debt was definitely paid. But there's an unforgivable sin and there is a living sacrifice. I give it to them eternal life. Receive ye the spirit of life because of righteous by the works of the law or the hearing of faith. From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. So they sacrificed the man who they could see. Mortal. And they thought they were mocking God. But guess what? When the man Jesus was raised from the dead. Oops. These devils love that they can instill fear in man by killing and murdering and taking away their property and doing all this stuff. They love that they can say, your children are our children. We will send your children to fight this fight. They love that they can fool you and trick you and beguile you and tell you that when you fight a war, you're fighting a holy war. Go and kill and destroy because, hey, God is on our side. They love to, en to enlarge their pockets, enlarge their coffers. Through the blood, through the blood and the death of your children. They love that deception as they sit back, lay back in the comfort of their homes and their palaces that are international and so-called global. They love it that you go and steal other people's resources. 
They love that the fact that you're so dumb and so blind and so stupid that you serve them. And God knows that you serve them. He that committed sin is a servant of sin. He that sinned is a, he that committed sin is a servant of sin. He that committed sin is a servant of sin. He that sinned is of the he that committed sin is of the devil. Right? All the children of the flesh have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The children of the God, the children of God, the children of the one true God, a spirit named Jesus, cannot sin. Cannot. You need to understand and believe it. See, that's the problem. They don't want you, they don't believe it, thou this. They don't believe it, thou this. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believe it, thou this. They don't believe you pass from death to life. They don't believe you live according to God's spirit. They don't even believe there is a spiritual body because they know that if you believe there's a spiritual body and the body is not, quote unquote, flesh and bones is not a child of God, then they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, God quickened a mortal body. You mean that mortal body that we try to racialize and paint as God? You mean the hypostatic, the hypostasis is actually a lie? You mean that's not, you mean he's not doing it by the works of the flesh? It's the spirit that beareth witness the spirit of truth it's the self-same spirit that worketh all in all he that joined to the lord is one spirit is god that worketh in me through the foolishness of what preaching preach the word preach the word in season and out of season beware of the leaven how understand you not that i speak it not of bread beware of the doctrine oh they gave you a doctrine of the trinity you're like oh three distinct persons second person Fully God, fully man. Two natures, one person, co-equal, co-eternal. You said, wait a minute. One of the co-eternals died. Let me redefine death. <laughs> but it said no man has seen God at any time. Well, wait a minute. That's not talking about the man, Jesus. But no, it says Jesus is the only potentate who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can, has, can approach which no man can see nor can see. It's talking about Jesus when it says he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. That's talking about Jesus who's the head, the savior of the body, the spirit of the bride. It's talking about Jesus when he says, come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he took me in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that holy city, Jerusalem. It's talking about Jesus. It says, Jerusalem above his bride, his mother of us all. So he's got to be a father to his bride's children. And it says, be husband of one wife, the spirit and the bride say, come. It's talking about Jesus when he's talking about he's the head, the Godhead, the savior of the body. It's talking about blessed he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We come in one name, baptizing in the name. It doesn't say baptizing in the names. We baptize in the name of what? By the spirit. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body and we're found in him having not our own righteousness. And it says we're in Jesus. The spirit is life because of righteousness, righteousness. It's talking about Jesus when he says he's the good shepherd as men are led by spirit. It's talking about Jesus says it's when it says that spiritual rock that followed them, the first, the last, the alpha and omega, the beginning, the end, the root and the offspring. It's talking about Jesus. But it's not talking about the flesh of Jesus being God. Because God can come fashion in the many fashions of the Son of Man. And there's many fashions and many colors and many forms. But you're not to make a graven image. Trinitarians. So you, you got an idol. You got an idol. So you want to debate because you want to convince the world. I want to convince the world that my God is true. And then at the end of the day, you say, well, tell me about your Tell me about your prophecy. Tell me how you see the future working out. Tell me about your, give me the revelation of Jesus Christ. By the way, it's called the revelation of who? When Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil, and the works of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Israel after the flesh, right? Israel after the flesh, <laughs> idol, sacrifice to devils and not to God. You are lively stones built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. It says, because there is no truth in him. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, it's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit of truth. He that hath, he that, he that believeth hath the he that believeth the Son hath the witness in himself. And this is the record which he has given us, even what? Eternal life. Live according to God in the Spirit. 
He speaketh, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it, a murderer and a liar. You guys are claiming that God has a chosen race. I just want you to, I just want you to think of that. Think about it, not just when you see the so-called black man claiming and teaching the lie. Because the black man teaches the lie, that's the lie, he, he's got his idol. But I want you to equally esteem the lie just as deplorable when you see the white man teaching the lie. And don't let these fools try to go, well, Middle East, blah, blah, blah. They are, that's why God says they are in the flesh, can't please God. You got to stop being so stupid. You guys are worried about the top coat. And then they said, well, back in the old days, it was just plain old white supremacy. Now we got some called genetics, my genealogical DNA structure line. Right? He set the bounds according to the children of Israel. When you're talking about these guys offer up sacrifices, he said these guys are offering up the devils. I gotta go. I think I spelled that wrong. No, they didn't. He also, as lively stones, are built up a what? Spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up what? A spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God. Wait a minute, what is it? Israel after the flesh. Wait a minute, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And so these fools, just to, just to cut to the chase, these fools, when it's talking about your know, lively stones built up a spiritual house, house, temple, tabernacle, body, tent, right? Building made without hands, right? It's talking about all of us who are found in him, right? Many members, one house. Are you a member of the church, <laughs> right? It doesn't dwell in temples made with hands, okay. Needs to be worshiped with men's hands. Okay. Spiritual house. To offer up what? Living spiritual sacrifices. I give unto them eternal life. He talks about elect precious and he that believeth on him to everlasting life shall not be confounded. Many of you are so confounded. You are going to miss the time of your visitation because you are looking for a stupid sign which these fools and the fake lies sign of one of the three Abrahamic lies are giving you. Right? Fake Abrahamic life face, right? Talk about precious who believe he is precious to us, right? Precious to us. We talk about the words of God. Talk about, oh, the words, that, the words, the words that I speak, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and their life. That's precious. And these guys stumbled at the word, boy. They stumbled at the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. You got to be born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth. You got to be born of the spirit. They stumble. They're like, ooh, I'll be Abraham's seed. Never mind. Oh, you stumble. And a stone of stumbling over that spiritual rock, boy. They stumble. A rock of offense. Spiritual rock. Did we just read it? Spiritual meat, spiritual drink, spiritual rock. Ooh, spiritual house. They say, my foundation's in the flesh. All flesh shall perish and men shall turn again to the dust. That's just too bad. I will not, he says, I will not leave in thee one stone upon another. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You missed it. Even to them which stumble at the, there it is, at the word, being did, they have not all obeyed the gospel. What, what did Isaiah say? Who had believed our report? To whom had the arm of the Lord re, been revealed? They had not all obeyed the gospel. Wherein to believe on him to everlasting life. The gospel is preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the what? In the spirit. Right? Israel after the flesh. Right? Whereunto also they were appointed as a man is appointed man once to die, then the judgment. Well, the gospel is preached to them that are dead that they may be judged of sin because they believe not on me. You believe not because you're not my sheep, as I said unto you. But ye are a chosen generation. Who? All of us who've been regenerated, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, right? Oh, uh, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to change this to chosen race that ye should show forth the praises of him who what? Who called you out. Let your light shine before men. They may glorify your father, which is in heaven. Who's our father, which is in heaven? Uh, come, I'll show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Who's who's above and who's free, who's mother of us all. Right. 
What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. Your lively stones built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up what? Children of the flesh are on children of God, living sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Right? You got to watch these devils. You got to watch these devils. Call you out of darkness into his marvelous lights. Listen, which in time past were not a people, uh, no, we no man after the flesh, though we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. He that abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. He that are born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. God is a spirit. Each produces after his kind. He's called the father of spirits. The last Adam is a quickening spirit. The spirit is life because of righteousness found in him, having not my own righteousness. Listen, which had not obtained mercy, but this, but now not listen. Who's 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 the chosen race? Listen, who's the chosen generation, y'all? Who's the true? Who's listen? Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He what saved us by the washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, that you know what these fools tried to do, y'all? You know what they instead of chosen generation, you know what these fools tried to do? You know what these lying Trinitarian, carnal Zionist, Islamic, fake infidels tried to do instead of it being those who've been regenerated right regeneration they took the word chosen generation and just to try to make it seem like it's they put the word chosen race chosen race chosen race chosen race chosen race elect race choice race choice race chosen race right chosen race now we go back to darby and we say, when did this happen? When did this happen? And we go back and we see, look, this happened in the 1800s, right? This is during the Berlin Conference. This is setting up for World War I, World War II. This is, oh, they've been colonizing under the guise of the papal bulls for all that time. And then they say, now we're going to switch it over in our three trifecta of fraud and heresy, our trinity of lies and devils. And they said, now we're going to switch from Oh, you guys, we're going to continue to have wars amongst ourselves and we're going to continue to fool these, these, these suckers, these people, these other. See, the devil's house is divided against itself. That's why I can't stand. That's why you keep seeing them falling in the field, you know, through war. Right. They just bring forth murder and murder and murder. And they say, hey, we're having a war because, hey, you know, God wants us to go steal these people's resources. And they, of course, got to make up some some excuse, some lie, some pretext. Right. See what they did? They changed it to chosen race. Right? These fools changed it to chosen race. Right? You got to think about that. They changed it to chosen race. You know that can't be true, guys. How is it a chosen race? It is not. They're just trying to say God is a white man. And then you what the, the problem is you get these people and then you sit there and they sit there and they say stuff. And they. Um, here's what they're going to say to you when someone, when someone calls them out for the making a white supremacist God or trying to make God a white man and trying to make God in generally a man generally, whether it be so-called white or black, all blasphemy. God. I don't know if um, it's interesting when people claim name. So are you new here, Kathy? Let's give There's Kathy no such a, thing as the white man's God. I don't know if um, it's interesting when people claim that, that Christianity is the is the God of the white man. He uh, I don't know Have y'all seen what Hebrew people look like. They're not, you know, Aryan. But in any case, does this make sense? This is a fool speaking because the children of the flesh are not the children of God. That's why I said no man has seen God at any time. And it's talking about Jesus dwelling in light which no man can approach but no man has seen nor can see. That's why it says he's the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. He can come fashioned in the likeness of any man, but the children of the flesh aren't children of God. That's a mortal body that was quick and that died. Okay? That was not God. God is a spirit named Jesus. He's the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. 
the head, the savior of the body, right? But see, she's trying to say something while diverting and trying to still convince the person. Well, I'm not saying there's no such thing as have you seen Hebrew people? Well, let me show you something. Let me show you something. This Renee is the same Renee who did a video talking about Rabbi Eckstein, founder of International Fellowship of Christians. He died. She's doing this, talking about some, don't be a denier. I'm tired of people saying I know them to say they're Jews or not in synagogues of Satan. She says, don't say that. It's for our sakes, and there's no more Jew or Gentile. Temporarily, 11 or 9, I can't remember, synagogue of Satan. Read Roman, ugly messages sending to me about those fake Jews in synagogue of Satan. She's saying, don't say they're fake Jews, synagogues of Satan, right? And then she's giving a tribute to Rabbi Eckstein because he died. Oh, my sheep never perish. So there goes your problem. Then this Rabbi Eckstein, guess what? Guess who's giving homage to Rabbi Eckstein? The so-called prime minister. Well, wait a minute. Are they not all? Listen, let me show you guys something. Well, here's the minister. We're not ministering death to people by killing them. Look, all. Here's what we're, here's what we are. The people of God are what? They in the flesh can't please God, sir. The scriptures say, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Salvations of the what? True Jews. So it says we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the what? Flesh. Without controversy, grace and mystery, godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Know we no man after the flesh, though we've known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth, since we pass from death to life and live according to God in the spirit, know we him no more because God is a spirit and they that know him are sealed and sanctified, born again of the incorruptible seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever, which means they're children, right? As men are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God, born not after flesh, not of not flesh, nor of blood, nor the will of man, but of the spirit of God, who's called the father of spirits. So when we say salvations of the Jews, we're talking about the real Jews, the circumcision made without hands, right? The circumcision which works for God in the spirit, rejoicing in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. Those who have eternal life themselves, right? You have to have Christ in you, the hope of glory, so that you can go get other people saved, right? Through the regeneration, washing, renewing of the Holy Ghost, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. According to his mercy, he saved us, right? So we understand this, right? All of us who believe. But this same Renee is going to give crudo. She tried to say, well... I'm not saying there's a white God, but this is Netanyahu. Have you seen so-called Hebrew? No. Have you seen Netanyahu? Have you seen Roseanne Barr? Have you seen Harry White? Have you seen Weinstein? Have you seen all these people? Have you seen all these so-called people who claim to be Jews or not? Have you seen the children of the flesh? She's talking about color and she's still, it's so stupid because she's trying to focus and say, well, you can't claim they're white. Renee should know better. Renee knows that they try that race has been classified and reclassified. And by the way, who has been the one who's invented race? Who's the one who's exploiting race? Who's the one who's trying to profit off race? Who's the one who's telling people they got to sign up and report their race? Who's doing that? Who did that? So stop with the stupidity. And so here's the thing about Netanyahu. Then that's her doing that. Then she does this. She talks about the war. And she's like, well, Israel at war. There's over 2,000, 2,200 rockets long. And she said, she said, Netanyahu, he's a real man. A real what? Leader. Well, that's funny. It says this means you're led by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. And he says, you know, some people like Renee, you know. Remember we talked about. They're Gentiles. They sacrifice unto idols. Know that ye were such were some of you, but you are what? Washed, right? We've been through the washing, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, not, not by works of righteousness. We, do, we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, right? He says, carried away unto these dumb idols, every manner of wind of doctrine, even as ye were led. Meaning you weren't led by the spirit. You were led by what? Flesh and blood. And he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. He says, these guys are liars and there's no truth in them. He says, they just bring forth death. And of course, right on rally, right on cue. Here you have Renee Rowland saying, they're attacking God's chosen race again. And we got to do something about that. And then recently, Renee's trying to say, well, there's no Jew nor Gentile. They, 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 they speak fork, fork tongue. One minute, they're like, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Next minute, they're like, well, have you seen the so-called color of the such and such? Meanwhile, they do a video. Well, how long was this video? Four months ago. It's Netanyahu. Now, she's talking about, well, he's not, he's, he's not white. This is another video. Guess who did this video? Renee Rowland. 
Why, why not sinning cannot save? It says he that born of God cannot sin. No, the sin is of unbelief. So if you don't believe, that's the sin. And then when you do believe, you're born of God and you cannot sin. It's that simple. But this is a picture. So she said, have you seen the Hebrews? Well, Renee, where'd this picture come from? Where'd this picture come from? When it talks about Rabbi Eckstein and he's giving all these kudos to, Rabbi, to, to this guy Eckstein, who you're talking about, this is the guy. This is this is this guy seems to be white. This guy shaking his hand. He seems to be white. I mean, why do people think we're stupid? This is what I'm talking. It's like people think you're a bluttering idiot. Like people think you're an idiot. Look at this. These guys look Rabbi Eckstein. Look, look at all. The, look at all. The, look, the founder. Renee, I belong to Christians United for Israel, this hypostatic union. I belong to the hypostatic union club because I believe that God has a chosen race, right? W what color is this guy supposed to be again? I mean, seriously, who are you fooling? You're not fooling. What color is this guy supposed to be again? And another thing I'm going to tell you guys, just I'm gonna, I got to end this because I got to go. Don't let these guys fool you with their little, uh, we brought some Ethiopians in. These, the Ethiopians, they threw away the Ethiopians' blood. They were donating for blood, the Ethiopians. They threw away their blood. And then the Ethiopians, also, they were giving the Depo-Provera something, some long-term birth control. They were giving it to the women unbeknownst. They used the Ethiopians and brought them in when they got the heat because people saw them as being, quote, unquote, a racist, a racist, uh, ethno, so-called ethno-racist state. Then they said, let's do some PR campaign and bring in the Ethiopians. Don't let these fools fool you. All this fake liberalism that's being done by the so-called nation of so-called the leaders over there, they're not doing that because they actually care about people. It's what people always do. Pretend to be a friend, right? Do it by stealth. Do it by trickery. This is what they do. How many examples do you have of people coming up to Jesus? Oh, we know that out of Master Israel and they have no respect to person, blah, 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 blah. How many times did they come up pretending to be nice to Jesus, trying to get information, trying to do this, trying to do that, and then at the end, do what? Betray him and kill, get him, have him murdered, right? So you can't, if you get in the way of the money, even your whiteness won't protect you if you get in the way of this scam, okay? Being white won't protect you when you get in the way of this scam. So that's why people who come out and speak out, they get, so if you think Jesus was white, him being white didn't protect him, now did he? Somehow the shepherd was overtaken by his, soul, by his own sheep. And now if you believe that that was God, do you think God, the creator of all things, was murdered by his own creation? You are definitely, unquestionably, a fool and a blasphemer, okay? I gotta let it go, I gotta, I gotta go.